Okay, who's uh, who's on consent with me today, guys? Well, I have any, is it just me or? I think it's just you. Is Lori out to, again today? Yeah, she's out. Okay, um, sit, you want to join me, Chris? So it's because sure. We need a landscape architect on this. Yeah, um, we can do that. It's going to have a little hair on it. Because I think we're doing that. It's the overpass, right? Morning. Uh, uh, Alex, I think all, all it happens is the, the only two items. The only landscape is the uh, the drawing of the of the oak leaves on on the on the median. That's about it, you know. So. Okay. <laughs> We're starting a little late too. Out uh, everybody that anybody that just joined, we had a little delay here. All right, let's go. Let's see, Steve Fort, you, you somehow got in the meeting. <laughs> hey, Steve. <laughs> Sammy. Do you want me to go ahead and proceed? This is Fred Luna with the 101 team. And let me, uh, let me see if I can pull up your documents here real quick so we can share those with the world here. Yeah, we submitted one PDF document, it had about six pages. It was just very few comments. Okay, thank you, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> All right, C1, Highway 101, I'm going in that folder and we have, uh, we have the final consent. Okay, good. And then let's do this here. There's a, looks like another letter from Reeve Wolpert. Is everybody, I, I'm just going to look at this real quickly. I can see. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Couldn't get the mute button in time for that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's see your screen. Okay, can everybody see this? Are we good, Leah? Yes. Let's Getting a, need one more. It's kind of still getting some windows set up. I, I always forget how this works. Okay, good. I got that. I got that. I can see that. You guys want to see me? I am. I'm actually here. Okay. Greatly respect that you volunteer time. Okay. Uh, so there's a few observations. <clears throat> so I don't see anything in here, Chris, or that is asking for any kind of specific item. It's just a kind of a, a, a letter from Steve. Is there any? Uh, yeah, that's. I don't. I don't see anything in here I could address with these guys. Right, just a kind of a yeah, it's a good letter, congratulatory letter, right? So <laughs> <laughs> you won them over, folks. It looks like a little bit, I think. <laughs> so, well done, I guess. All right, so here's the. Uh, you everybody see this? Okay. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. You want to, um, Fred? Do you want to walk us through? Yeah, yeah, I'll certainly do that. So. Um, uh, I'm going to walk through all the slides and then, um, but we do have our other team members to answer any questions if they do come up, uh, specifically um, uh, Zach from our design team, Laura from our landscape architect team with Caltrans, and then uh, we have also have uh, Kirsten Ayers, Christine Anderson, Joe Arnold, and David Emerson if anything comes up. So the first one is related to the, the Memorial Oaks median barrier. Um, this was discussed. The comment specifically was related to the selection by SBAR of option four. If you recall, we presented four options. Um, and this one reflected the uh, best combination, I should say, of having the maximum leaf pattern and rent size and in random pattern and then the addition of the blue stripe um, or wave pattern in the, in the barrier. And then you can see the, um, the, the stain colors, nothing's changed in that regard. This is just the selection of that, that option that SBAR preferred. Okay. Any questions? Next one. 
That's good. Okay. So this one's just to show that um, the comment was that after much discussion, we were not going to put lighting. So the lighting was accepted as is with only the lights underneath the undercrossing. This is a view from the um, Lily Avenue side looking towards the ocean. And so no lights in front of the bridge. And then the next one. Um, there was a specific comment, and I'm not sure if you can scroll um, to the left. There's some dimensioning that we added. Uh, SBAR wanted the top cap reduced from 12 inches to 9 inches. So um, to the far left on the bottom, you can see that 9-inch dimension um, was added. And that's, that's the revised size of the cap. Does it remain 12 inches up on the wall, you know, the freeway wall, I guess it is? Uh, Zach or Christine, can you answer that? Yes, Fred, it does. It, the walls along um, the southbound side of the freeway are 12 inches with that okay. cap. Okay. Okay. And then the next one is the, um, this is the uh, rendering that uh, we were using to show a number of things, but specific to the comment that was made was the preference by SBAR for the vertical board element um, on the, the wing walls, the retaining walls that are adjacent to the structure. So you can see that. And then um, the, this comment was uh, the rendering to show that um, SBAR um, allowed the team to select a preference for the sun motif. I think for constructability reasons, we chose to select the one that we had presented and that was approved at preliminary. Great. Okay. And then got a color board. Yeah. And then the last on one, the really the only change here was the addition to address the comment that SBAR had asked that we look at um, reducing the font height for our, so you can see on the top right there, we added a little schematic of the dimensioning for the font. And um, so the height for the Summerland um, name itself is 18 inches. The founded in 1889 is 10 inches. The overall girder face is 30 inches. Um, and we did, um, uh, find a serif font that could be used. Um, so that, that was able to be addressed. And quick Very question, uh, Fred, while we're on this slide, Josh, we can go back. Um, the founded in 1889, is that to be centered uh, vertically? It looks like it's pushed down a little bit. And I guess some well, just just a, I think that's just the font style, Chris. It's uh, the nine swoops down. No, no, the whole thing is low, um, at least. Zach, can you confirm that? I believe that's probably the, the the overall thirty inches. It's ten inches, so we would have um, ten would inches we, above and below. Would we have ten inches above and below? That's right. Yeah, and, and um, the comment that was mentioned earlier. So the one and the nine are are adjusted to be slightly lower than the two eights. Okay. Anyway, okay. Thank you. Hey, uh, so there's that font style issue, right? No, it's the, it's just the way it was um, set on the page because founded looks a little bit. Oh low. yeah, so yeah. So the one and nine are, are a little smaller. I see they're set down. I see how it works. Okay. All right. And that, um, so that was, I believe, all the comments that we received um, last uh, last time we were there, and so. Okay. Yeah. Let me let me just look at the unapproved minutes here. We're gonna be ratifying those today, aren't we? So. Here we are. So this, there, there's these, right? No. That's what we're talking about. Oh, sorry, that's another part of the our, uh, So before we do that, Josh, uh, Leah, is there any yeah. other public comment on this uh, other than the letter? Nope, that was it. Okay. We had the uh, board members prefer option number four to be used in Memorial Oaks. We took it that. Maintain and paint it every 10 years minimum. Uh, Evans Underpass approved project lighting is submitted. 12 inch top rail, uh, lettering, vertical planking, and um, the sun motif. Okay, good. So, very good. I, I feel like, well, I don't feel I should say that. It appears that you've 
um, addressed all the comments adequately. So I, I feel like I can put this on the agenda today to support it, create a motion for its final approval. So that's that's what we'll do. Yeah, I agree, and I, I like um, Fred and, and and team. You know, I think a lot of work was put into the the leaf motif, and I think we finally got there. So nice work. <laughs> Looks good like that. Nice and it's randomized. You have larger leaves. So I think that'll be an excellent feature. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and um, and the. Well, the consent committee and then the full S bar so for your work on this uh, in our in helping us. So, thank you. Good, good project. Okay. All right. Let's thanks for hanging go. in there with the web meetings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> guess, All right. So let's of... get right to it because we're 20 minutes behind. Um, we'll bring the S bar meeting of July 10th to order, beginning with. Uh, public comment if there's anyone from the public who wishes to speak on an item that's not on today's agenda you can raise your hand or speak now or Leah let us know if there's anyone I don't see anybody okay <clears throat> very good um, let's see okay so uh, item two the agenda status report any changes to today's agenda It would probably help if I unmuted myself. We have no changes to today's standard agenda. Yeah, okay. Uh, moving on to the minutes from June 19th. We will now review those and fine tune those comments. Item number one, item D, are we there? Oh, well, again, we have a, we have two number ones here. So I assume oh. you mean number two. Right? Oh, I'm on item number one, two. <laughs> so, so I guess that's one thing, Joe. Um, there are, I don't know if these are all misnumbered then. They, no, because it goes one, one, two, four. So this would be item number two that John is speaking to, D. So go ahead, John. Yeah, about the good friend Dick. You know, on item D, <coughs> for the, under the comments, it says, uh, you know, it could be reduced in size and centered on three structures, uh, on three structure. Uh, you know, as I recall, there were uh, three arches down below on the ground floor. Is that what that refers to? I think or, it's supposed to be the structure. Yeah. Centered on the structure. It's centered on the structure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got that. I think that's what that, that was meant. I think, I, uh, I guess this would be also 2E, um, provide more clear drawings so that the proposed structure is more uh, readable. Yeah, not more visible. Yeah, and, and reduce thickness of dimension lines. Yeah, got it, thanks. Well, you know, or actually just uh, should be clearer, it's more, structure is clear you know yeah i think it could just be uh provide more clear drawing so that the proposed structure is more readable period mm -hmm. and then reduce thickness of dimension lines etc okay 
Okay, got that. Chris, um, I'm just looking at uh, SBAR item 52, the Precker edition remodel. Um, one member continues to object to the massing of the garage. Can we give a little, I don't know who that was. Can we give a little more direction to that? I think it was John. That was me, yeah. <clears throat> but didn't, you know, didn't we, uh, or that was that a, a other project. Uh, yeah, I still think the garage with that shop addition to it is, is too massive for the street, uh, you know, at the street elevation. That's yeah, I think opinion. that was a carryover comment from the previous meeting. So you were just continuing that comment. And, and no, I think that um, we discussed that and John objected to the massing. And I think the rest of us thought that the garage was fine. Mm -hmm. right? If I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, Alex. Well, yeah, I can be yeah. voted down. It hurts my feelings, but I'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it looks like it got preliminary approval, too. Um, does that satisfy your request, Josh? Well, I think, I think um, Valerie just answered my question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's, let's concentrate on number four to see if we got it right. Yeah, number four is... Yeah, so 4F uh, should be roof overhang. Not overhand. You know, you know, like uh, on four, it says D, you know, architectural form and style is appropriate. You know, as this thing developed, we all sort of came to the conclusion that th this isn't the right style. And so it says at the end, additional study on, on J, additional yeah. study could help the project fit into a Summerlin community. Yeah. I mean, I sort of think that. Uh, uh, we almost disagreed with item D by the time we we're finished with reviewing the thing. That's right. I think that's well, another way to another way to say that would be that if you're going to go from modular to stick framing, you actually have the opportunity to frame whatever you want. So I think that's what we're saying. It's like that frees up the uh, architect to be a little bit more creative in terms of how they address these other items, right? Because they're not constrained with a modular building anymore. Right, but I think that the first few items make it sound like everything is just completely fine going along, just work on some details. Yeah. But that's not really the way we ended up. Let me, let me As we discussed it more, we were feeling that they had a big opportunity to, to really make a, a more hospitable, children's environment a more creative solution and and more in keeping with Summerlin community and so I think it's confusing the way the comments go because they kind of reflect the evolution of our discussion but don't don't clear up what I thought was the conclusion yeah. exactly at first we say it's okay, and then at the end we say, well, maybe not. Yeah. I think that, that this is an important uh, 
project. It is. And, and we should uh, be clear about, you know, encouraging uh, them to uh, reflect the character of Summerland and, 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 you know, it's a beach community, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it's going to be there a long time, you know, and the schools much more than just a education center. And so I think it's important that, that we be clear and, and, you know, push uh, or indicate to uh, KBZ that, you know, the direction that we think that the thing should take. Okay, okay. So let, me, uh, let, me, let me propose some simple wording that can fix this. Okay, on item D, the architecture uh, seems to be moving in the right direction, but the style uh, needs to be further developed and the details should be improved. Uh, can you add something about mass bulk and scale to that? Well, uh, are we, we were not happy with the, with the size of the buildings or, or what? No, I, I think we were actually. I think mass bulk and scale were appropriate, but style was not. Is that? Well, okay. Uh, yeah, no, I think so. Uh, so what I said is the architectural, uh, the architecture of the, uh, has improved or something like that, but, but the style needs to be further developed and the details should be improved too. The mass bulk and scale is acceptable. How about that? Yeah, yeah so take out architectural form and style as appropriate. Just take that out. Yes, so, so we, they're saying the architecture is moving in the right direction, but the style needs to be further developed and the details should be improved too. Well, it, it could be further developed to reflect the character of Summerland. Yeah, maybe take yeah. the letter J and put it up in there. It should be up near the beginning. Yeah. I think it should be uh, character and quality of, of the uh, character and highest quality of Summerlin architecture because I, I think that's the point is that the reference point for this project isn't it is a, is a larger community concern about architecture and, and you know, going with a Summerlin, you know, appropriate Summerlin style architecture is the first thing, but then the quality of it needs to come up because uh, it's a central piece and kind of their, I don't know, their, their commercial, almost in their, you know, main public zone, right? It's yeah, not necessarily it's, a neighborhood. It, it's interesting after all this effort being put into the Summerlin underpass, and here's another major Summerlin change, Summerlin improvement that is really important to that whole community and after all the effort that's been going into the, to the bridge this should be brought up to the same level of yeah, exactly. community so, identity identity guys why don't you just let's just put some wording in these minutes that reflect what we said in the in the meeting and, in, and with all of those things that you're saying but let's just put it clearly uh, I, I propose something for d and then J probably needs to be moved up, you know, right after B. Yeah. yeah. Also, also, I would take the second sentence from G and put it with that J comment. Uh, like a B. study that can color that, that part or what? No, project could be more whimsical and current proposal doesn't speak to an inviting schoolyard environment for small oh, children. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So, so real quick, just, just to make sure I'm capturing everything because there's, there's a lot of different comments being, being thrown around. So I just want to make sure we're not missing anything. So, I've, I've started and I just want to make sure we're going down the right direction. So I, I uh, added a new comment above, uh, above D that, that just says mass, bulk, and scale are appropriate. And then I updated D to say that architecture seems to be moving in the right direction. However, style should be further developed to help fit the project, to help the project fit in with the Summerland community, period. I would take out the, uh, the. I would take out. I would take out the part about architecture. I would say. Um, I would just say architectural form and style is appropriate. Take it out. I. I. I, I don't think yeah. it is. I, I think that's what they need to work on. I think we want to say. You did take it out. Details. Huh. You did, did take it out. Okay. I, I heard you say architecture. And architectural style is appropriate. 
I no, he said it's he moving in the right direction, I think. Yeah, I don't think it is. I no, think no, it's like an <laughs> Joe, Joe, <laughs> that's that's army. There. hang on a second. Joe, that's not what he said. Reread that one, please, Joe. It says, it says, architecture seems to be moving in the right direction. However, style should be further developed to help the project fit in with the Summerlin community. Okay, and what I'm saying so is architecture is not moving in the right direction. It's not moving in the right direction. That's what we're saying. <clears throat> looks like an army barracks. Hey, wait, compared to what we had before and what we said at the meeting, we, we, cannot, have lived, we cannot revisit the whole meeting now because... Hey, I did say that at the meeting. I did I too. I, told like them, I, I lectured them about going and getting a bigger budget. They kept talking about how I'm not having the money and I said, well, maybe you're not ready to do this project because Summerlin's not going to have a have a half half baked uh, elementary school dropped in in the middle of it, and if they need more money, they should go raise it so they can actually do pro appropriate architecture. This is a school should be at the highest, like in Summerlin, should actually be the highest example of good architecture. That's how schools are built. They're not like the the worst looking building in town. They need to be at least in the top ten. I mean, in a small town like this, it's like oh, that's. Oh. That, I made a pretty strong point of that in the meeting. So why don't we do this, Josh? Why don't we just say that the SBAR understands the um, limit budget limitations of the project. However, mm -hmm. the architecture is not, um, the architectural style and detailing is not up to uh, community standards. Well, or the, the architecture doesn't reflect the, 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 yeah. the Summerlin community or the Summerlin uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, community, I guess. Something to that effect. Now, Chris, why don't, to, just to move us through this, like, I think, why don't you go from A to B to C? I think you have the idea here, Chris. Let's just read each one. Why don't you add in comments and then unless anybody disagrees strongly with Chris is saying, let's, let's have Joe just follow you through that and then we can be done with it. I think we all, we're all on the same page here. We just need to comb out the tangles here. Yeah. Right. All right, great. Um, no pressure. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, <clears throat> I guess A still applies, but I don't think that should be the first comment. Right. Uh, I think we should start with um, the SBAR understands that the, uh, the budget for the budget project, restraints. The, yeah. Um, SBAR understands the budget restraints holding this project back or, or just understands the restraints. However, <clears throat> um, uh, whatever I said before, the, the, um, however, the architectural uh, style and, and quality of the project is insufficient as presented. Well, um, you know, so hold the on. board, yeah you know, understands budget, the budget restraints. However, this project, you know, uh, m merits, you know, this, this project should reflect the character of, su of Summerland. Yeah, so- um, Is that better? Like that. And we'll have Joe read that back in a minute, but then also we should add something about the uh, sorry, I got distracted. Um, so, uh, let's see. Style and detailing needs further study. Um, project could be more whimsical, and current proposal doesn't speak to an inviting schoolyard environment for small children. Um, do, do you think we should be so strong as to say that... Uh, the style as as presented is not acceptable. I mean, it does look a couple of barracks. And, you know, yeah. I've been in the army, and that's what they look like. <laughs> I think that's what we're saying. Architectural style is inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, that's a good word. Um, and should be in greater keeping with Summerlin community. Yeah. Um, see study and that's what we want to say first you know because that's really yeah, yeah how that's, we feel that's about it and, start exactly yeah so i think that would be comment number one joe 
if that was clear. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm keeping up. Okay. So then, uh, let's see. You know, I want to, maybe I think we should scrap letter E, concrete walls are appropriate, because yeah. they're, even though the material is good, they are part of the problem of how harsh and yeah. rectilinear their grading is, which and is cold. letter I. Yeah. I agree. <clears throat> so just get rid of E. Um, roof overhangs, fine. That could be moved down. Uh, study interface between northern and southern plazas. That's fine. Um, Study access. I think the rest of them are okay. Study access to school. It appears yeah. harsh. There's a lot of. There's too many softened in here. <clears throat> we need some different words. Like the last three comments have, or, or, you know, lots of things say soften here. So study access to school as proposed. It appears harsh. And I think we when it says access to school, I think we mean the main entrance. So yeah, restudy main, <laughs> main entrance. Restudy main entrance to school. As proposed. It appears harsh and uninviting. There you go. Re, that's, that's it right there. And then study alternative paving materials. Uh, and then chain link is prominent, different material. Could, there it is, soften the appearance again. So could improve the appearance for its chain, chain link fence. Retaining walls are very rectilinear and add to the overall uh, rectilinearity of the site design. Um, consider um, softening. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I mean, the concrete Here's material is, is a fine material, but it's just, it's the shapes and the grading and the, yeah. So I, I, I say so forms throughout, including retaining walls, are very you, rectilinear. You could just say restudy. Yeah. Well, um, but I think using the word rectilinear explains what we were responding to, that it's very rigid. Yeah. So site design including uh, throughout site design throughout, including retaining walls, etc., are very rectilinear. Um Restudy. Consider, re yeah, restudy. That's fine. It's just so general. And, and then, then planting to integrate and soften the walls. That's okay. Yeah. And then I think J we kind of already addressed with A, so that could go away. Yeah. I Is mean, whatever was in J should be at the beginning. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Joe. So, yeah. Um, let me, give me, give me like 10 seconds to read through the first, the first comment was kind of like, um, thrown together. Let me just read through that and I'll read it back to everybody. Does that, that work for you guys? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. One more thing. What, what do you guys want to do with B? Hang on, let's, let's, uh, with B? Mm -hmm. Let's give Joe a second here and then we'll, we'll, uh, address that. We could say it's an improvement. Change from modular to stick built is in is an improvement. Yeah. Well, but you know it. it it's a big it change from modular to stick. You know, allows more flexibility. Yeah. You well, know, I, I get that, but and, it, and, and they're not taking advantage of it. What I mean, it looks that? like it did before. You know, but the change from modular to stick. Uh, SBAR appreciates the change from modular to stick built, which uh, allows greater um, opportunities that should be taken. Flexibility. Yeah. Or, yeah, greater creativ creativity. Yeah. That should be taken. That, that's, that's very good. That should be taken advantage of or something, yeah. Could, could you repeat that? So, um, the best bar appreciates the change from modular to stick built, which offers greater opportunities for uh, creativity and flexibility, which should be taken advantage of. Okay, so could you repeat that, that last part of that? 
as far appreciates the change from modular to stick built. Uh, which, uh, shit. Uh, <laughs> which, um, anybody remember what I said? Allows for more creativity and flexibility that should be taken advantage of. Yeah. Thank you. Alex. Can you remember that? <laughs> or how about that should be utilized? Yeah, that's fine. There you go. Better. Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, I am ready with the first comment if, if everyone's ready. Go ahead. Okay, architectural style is inappropriate. It should be in keeping with the Summerland community. SBAR understands the budget restraints of the project. However, the architectural style and quality of the project is, is insufficient as presented and doesn't reflect the style of the Summerland community. Style and detailing needs further study. Project could be more whimsical and current proposal doesn't speak to an inviting schoolyard environment for small children. That's great, Joe. Step to the head of class. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of pop. Okay. Um, I think the, the very first part of the first one should just say more in keeping with Summerlin, not in keeping. I don't know if that's a big deal, but <clears throat> if you... Yeah. I got that. Okay, and then the rest is pretty straightforward? Yeah, the rest of the comments I, I was able to incorporate, I think they were straightforward. Okay, is everybody happy with that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Very happy. Let's move on to number five. We approved this one, so let's just move on. Okay. Yeah, number six. Mm. Um, I, I think A should be provided, right? Yeah, I got that. Okay. And I think the first part of A is somewhat debatable because I, I think that some members thought that it could have been a response. I mean, the building was very much the same. It just pushed back a little bit in the middle section. <clears throat> Otherwise, it wasn't a huge change. Um, so, oh, I don't know. Anybody have thoughts on that? Maybe just take out the word very. <laughs> yeah, I, I, would, I wouldn't be quite so effusive. Yeah. It's very generous. It is. It's, you know. It's a, it's a slick presentation is what it is. And it had, remember how it went on for an hour? Yeah. So it, it's sort of a bombardment of presentation technique mm -hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't even put that first comment in there would it be more accurate to say that some members feel I think you could remove it almost I mean you know we have a lot of excellent presentations that yeah I, that's awesome. my feeling is that it's not really necessary to, to say that for this Removed. Yeah. So let's see. One member is in support. So what should be the first comment, though? There should be maybe a first comment. Mm. So you visit with story poll is required. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> Yeah, that's tough, actually, because um, yeah. it was kind of we were all kind of mixed on that. So we could say the S bar has <laughs> mixed. Feelings. So while you while you were gone, Chris, the, um, one of the planners contacted me. I guess you were you were on vacation for a bit there, um, and they wanted clarification on whether or not they we should uh, story pull the carports or not. 
Oh, I did um, respond to that as well. Yeah, and they they called me while you were gone, and I I I talked to I looked at it again with them, and I I kind of went back to the meeting, and I I told them no, it's not necessary at this point. Like this, this, this initial story poll shouldn't have to include that. Right, and so, I um, yeah, and I responded and said that I think that the um, the stairways on the side of the building should be included, at least the one peak of the roof there, because I think that adds to the mass Vulcan scale. So I guess you didn't see my response, Josh, but I also responded to that. <clears throat> okay. uh, so Val, I mean, what, what do you think? The SBAR has mixed feelings about the response to the previous comments? Something I quick. mean, they, no, I'm, I'm trying to think what it, what would be a way to say it because they, I mean, they did make some, some good responses yeah. to the comments and they had a, a good presentation. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe you could say that the, the applicant responded to SBAR comments, particularly regarding the carports. That, that, you know, that, that was such a long, boring, unbroken line right in the front of the project. And they went to a lot of effort to break that up. Yeah, I'd say the, the board of uh, SBAR appreciates the applicant's response. Uh, response to suggestions to change the carports and and provide. landscaping in the foreground or right and 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 the landscape changes <clears throat> and also you know uh providing some uh movement in the building like pushing back that center yeah and materials too they introduce different materials yeah so i think that is a good list do you do you have that, Joe, or do you want some more clarification? Uh, just a second. I'm, I'm uh, finishing up typing. Uh, would you want to include colors on that list as well, or is, was that? Yeah, I think we were all fine with the color. If I recall, most people. Yeah, were. they gave us some choices, right? And then we picked. Yeah. Um, okay, just a second. Okay, so. Um, Please let me know if I'm missing anything or if I included something that's not supposed to be in there. But I said, uh, SBAR appreciates the applicant's response to SBAR comments regarding materials, colors, landscaping, location of the building, and breaking up the carport. Yeah. Yeah, but he also did to the building too. You know, he, he said that he changed that facade there, which made a big difference. So, location and facade of the building. Wait, read it again, Joe? Yeah, read it again. SBAR appreciates the applicant's response to SBAR comments regarding materials, colors, landscaping, location of the building, and breaking up of the carports. Okay, it wasn't location of the building, that didn't move. It was, no. it was um, and those should probably be at the front. <clears throat> uh, the carport should be first, because I think that's the largest maneuver. Yeah, break up of the carport. And I don't know what to say about the building because it, it didn't really change it. Yeah, they pushed the center back a little bit. Yeah. And actually, they, they, they added more landscaping in front of the building, which was yeah. also helpful. Yeah, I think, in, Joe, maybe say landscape screening is what they really worked on. So, yeah, I don't know if the movement in the building was enough to warrant a congratulatory yeah um, statement okay i've got all those do you want me to read it back again yeah okay um so it's ask our comments regarding breakup of the carports materials colors and landscape screen in front of the building landscape screening in front of the main structure I guess it would be landscape buffer. It's not really screening. Yeah, right, right. Buffer. And I'm sorry, Joe, did you say, how did you say break up? Did you say break up of the carport? 
Yeah, so so um, applicant's response to escort comments regarding breakup of the carport, <coughs> materials, colors, and landscape buffer, dot, dot, dot. But it almost sounds like if we put materials and colors after yeah. carports, it almost sounds like we're saying breaking up the materials and colors, which is a little awkward. Yeah, yeah. that doesn't but, sound but right. Breaking up the carport, um, landscape buffer in front, and then materials and colors. <clears throat> um, do we want to say like addition of the landscape buffer? Yeah, sure. That would help to separate it from the breakup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on C, it says uh, two members are su supportive of the size of the project depending, you know, pending site visit story polls. I, I, I would strike out of the size. Two members yeah. are supportive of the project pending site visit story polls. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree. I think that the uh, study ways to incorporate more private outdoor space for each unit, particularly the top, the top units. I think that's a very important point. Yeah, I do too. Actually, my, my daughters live in a big urban apartment complex and that is the single most valuable part of it. <laughs> Let's make that the second um, comment then. Yeah, we, we could move it up. It, uh, you know, the downstairs have a little space. A little yeah. uh, but uh, the only place they can put it is in the back, I think. But, uh, okay, we'll leave that up to them. Yeah, they so, have to put some decks, at, you know, in, in the back of the building. Which is, well, and they could use those to help improve the look of the building. I mean, they could be tied into the architecture. Right. Yeah. Well, anyway, I think it's a, it's an important point. Moving it up to number two would be a good idea. Okay, so then um, I think that, that's good. Uh, G, carport sections look are an improvement. It's not a good sentence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Need some editing. <laughs> Carports in sections are an improvement. Before it was a long, unbroken line. So. Well, I think. Oh, I see. Yeah, or, I, I totally read it wrong. I was reading it that like the sections show that the carports are improved. Oh, oh, oh. Well, yeah, you might be right actually, because they did have a few little partial sections, but not really. Yeah, that was, really, that was kind of the only thing that showed the carport was there was right. a section. Right. So, um, board would like to see more details regarding carports. Yeah. I think that's a modular, sort of a cantilever deal where you can buy off the shelf those. Uh, yeah, those sort of shed carport. roof deals. Yeah. Yeah. So are we are we keeping the the first portion of that that comment where uh, cardboard sections are an improvement? Um, no, it doesn't read right. It's um, car uh, carport sections. Uh, hmm. Sorry. You know, Do we say that the carport being broken up into sections is an improvement? Yeah. Yeah, but I, but I think what Chris is saying is what the, the comment actually was, is that the only way we really saw the carports was in that section drawing. And uh, that we need more information about the carports. Sections uh, indicating carports um, yeah. suggest improvement. Okay. However, the board would like to see more details. Yeah, that's good. And then probably get rid of I, because we added that in A. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. That one's gone. Yeah. Um, and then J, study railing as proposed, railing appears monotonous. Also, I was really concerned about the detail they had where they were putting that corrugated into plaster. That, mm -hmm. that looked like a funky detail. Mm -hmm. um, mm. You know, the, in, the architect is listening right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I said that at the meeting that I thought it, it would be difficult to execute. Yeah. So that's good. Study railing as as proposed. Railing appears monotonous and should be broken up and may be difficult to, to execute. Construct or execute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then M, one member recommends replacing raised bed garden, uh, raised vegetable beds with fruit trees. Uh huh. Yeah. More naturalized placement of trees along. Uh, more naturalized placement of trees along property line. I think that was basically referring to Kai Riel. Right. Um, so more naturalized placement of trees along Kai Riel. Doesn't matter because <clears throat> it could be on Patterson too. So yeah, you know, I guess it could be either. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Anyone else have any? Additions to any of these items? Uh, nope. Okay, somebody want to make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as noted. Okay, I think Josh beat you to it, but John is seconding. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I'm in favor. I'm going to abstain for item number, whatever there is, the last one. Six. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Very good. Uh, all right. Thank you. So, S, uh, moving on. That took a long time. Uh, <laughs> SBAR members' informational briefings. Anyone have something they want to get off their chest? Uh, do we have, um, have we talked about uh, adding new members to the board? I was going to ask the same thing, actually, and I've been talking with Leah and, well, a while back, and, and even David Villalobos, and he was going to reach out to some of these folks who had applied, but apparently some, there were several applications, and then <laughs> I think when they heard that it was, you know, uh, every other week and basically a full Friday, a lot of them backed off, um, even with the high pay that goes along with it. <laughs> and all the benefits. And the benefits. <laughs> um. <laughs> Chair, so. I, I think we should approach the AIA with this. I mean, the county should just, you know, just send, uh, send an email, a letter saying, you know, we need people. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, what I district uh, is it in? Is uh, the vacancy? I think it was, Leah, do you remember? Was it, um, the third was it district. one or three? It's a third district. It's third, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. But, but no, yeah. It's, it's not the third because I represent the third. Well, that doesn't mean somebody else can't also. Wasn't that what Doug was? Yes, Doug, Doug was in the, in, in the um, well, is it second or third you know, where Doug was? And, uh, he wasn't in the second because that's what you and I are, Alex. So. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and also Lori, too. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the third is what well, is I rep is heart that that's I represent that district. Mm -hmm. It's more than one, uh, you know. The, 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 yeah. it's, not, it's not one board member per district, and it could be from you know anywhere really. At this is point. it four? I don't know. We can look into it. I, I talked to David about it, and I there was somebody specifically that I was trying to get that is still interested that I was trying to get him to contact so to make it easier and I think he already submitted his application and everything but it's sort of not going anywhere so I was going to reach out again to David and Leah and see where we are with that so thanks for the reminder Josh so um, yes it looks like the vacancy Doug was from third district okay so John is it third district 
Yeah, John and Doug were third district. Oh, okay. okay. And I believe that David has reached out to him. He did check in with me, um, I think about a week, maybe a week and a half ago, saying that he did reach out to the applicant that Chris is referring to and that he left a message, um, but they're kind of plain phone tag. So I think they're working on it. I don't know how much success they've had. Yeah, okay, well, if that doesn't pan out or uh, I would say and or, we, could, we should do what Alex suggested and does somebody want to take that on to reach out to the AIA? I'm not super involved with that, but uh, happy to do it. I will do it. if. Uh... Or, I mean, it would be better if the chair does it, but if you okay. don't want to... I'll, I'll do it. If you... Um, I'll give you the I think I should talk to you. I'm happy to do it. Very good. Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll coordinate. Okay. Very good. So, uh, anything else, member informational briefings? No. Staff update? Uh, nothing for me to update. Okay, uh, consent agenda, Josh. Sorry, Vice Chair Bloomer. So uh, today's consent agenda, we reviewed uh, final submittal uh, for the- Highway 101. Uh, 101 underpass, Here, here's what was submitted today. Um, I reviewed it against the, the meeting minutes of our last agenda and um, peer, Appears that they have complied with all of our comments satisfactorily, and I'm um, I, I'm uh, ready to make a motion for final approval uh, based on that. Um, with the following uh, comment uh, to re that it, it, it showed up in the last meeting minutes, maybe Joe, you can help me with this. But um, there's a comment to. Um, I want to make sure it's, I don't see it in their documentation, but the comment is to uh, have a maintenance plan to repaint the uh, medians on a, I think it was five year cycle. 10 years, I think. But I, I think that years, was, yeah. that was 10 years. years. So it, it may be documented in the plans, it may not, but that was basically a condition that was put on there. So I'm just putting that into my, um, into my, uh, uh, what am I doing? I'm doing a uh, your motion. My motion, thank you. <laughs> I, I second the motion, and I think it's a very good idea to include that because it may disappear with time. You know, it's just basically paint. Yeah, I, and Alex, I should probably second the motion because I was also one of the okay. reviewers. All right. um, sure. so, so yes, second, and then all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Aye. very good. Let's move on. Motion carried. Standard. Congratulations, Summerlin, you got an overpass. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, all right. So moving on to item number one. Thanks for your patience. This is so we have what uh, eight um, projects to review today, all from the same location. That's the Santa Barbara Preserves, and we'll begin with lot number one. This is a request of Steve Fort from Sudan Elledge's office um, for conceptual review of a. 4664 square foot single family dwelling with the garage, guest house, and uh, cabana on a 27 acre parcel. And this is at 1155 Via uh, Gaitero Road. So, um, who do we have with us today? I know we have Steve. Is there anyone else here to present? If so, please state your name for the record. Hi, this is uh, Chuck Landy. I'm one of the principals of Santa Barbara Preserve. Okay. Hi, Chuck. And also on with us is uh, uh, our architect, Bob Heidi, and his team who will be uh, walking through. Okay. So, um, which folder are we looking at here, Leah? Is it 70? 70. Yeah, okay. So the bottom folder, Josh. And uh, Steve, I assume you'll be presenting initially. Um, I think Chuck Chuck wants to say a few words, and then Bob Heidi and Aaron Heidi, their our architectural team, they're going to run you through the actual uh, plans. Okay, I just wanted to request that somebody give us a, a history lesson here on what has happened on this site 
thus far and you know what the uh, an accurate portrayal of the location uh, etc great yeah as you recall we were before you uh, probably 18 to 20 months ago with the first phase of the santa barbara preserve uh, for a, a substantial conformance review uh, that that component is well underway uh, and will be um, done here in the next few months and so we're before you again today with the second phase of that project uh, known as the terraces. Um, as before, we've looked at the, the product, uh, for lack of a better word, that was approved several years ago in the, in the final approval of this project, uh, revisited the architecture itself. As you recall before, it was kind of Italianate and Mediterranean in, in nature. Uh, they were large structures, so we have, we're bringing to you new architecture we're bringing to you um, architecture that really fits within the land, which is a key component. Um, and we're bringing to you architecture that's smaller in square footage than was previously uh, approved when the project was approved as a whole. Um, we've carefully looked at um, grading and placement of the homes and uh, Bob uh, and his team will go through that uh, with you. I do want you to know that we did uh, as before, uh, meet with Glenn Fiddler of the Santa Barbara County Fire Department, uh, reviewing the, each of these sites, uh, fire access and maneuverability with each. And even though this focus is primarily on the architecture, uh, the plottings will reflect uh, the feedback from, from Glenn and his team as well. So with that, uh, Bob, do you wanna um, start with the, with the first one? Um, you want to start with the aerial view that would yeah. get us acclimated to the overview of the site? Yeah, Josh, if you go to the next page, you, you, you just go to one more page down. There you go. Good. Okay, well, on. there's also a Google Earth aerial. It's called Terraces Aerial Docks. Yep. It, it's in the files that we just saw listed back there. If you go all the way out. Yep. Josh, yeah, down it's there. down. Yeah. yeah, there you go. You, you had it, Terraces yeah, Aerial. Terraces dot. Aerial. Mm -hmm. so while, we're, while we're at it, we can go to uh, Google Earth and look at that. So let's okay. do that. It's well, always let's, better. Let's start with that aerial because they're, you know. Give me a second. Uh, Let me just. And maybe. So, uh, a little. Do we have an address or an APN? Or, uh, 1155 via Gaitero, but if, if you get yourself to 154, we can get you over there. Yeah, it's right on the east side of 154, uh, adjacent to the, that first bridge. Oh, there's my house. Right where it says San Marcos Foothills Preserve. See, there you go. Yeah, right. Is it here? Uh, no. Go up 154. I don't know where we are. You want to go up 154? Okay. Yeah, go to your right. Yeah, you are. There. Right. There it, it says is. preserve right there. there. It's labeled. Preserve. And as you okay. recall, uh, as with the, the first component of this uh, project, you've got lots that are, let's say, three to 20 acres in size. And there's a development envelope within which, uh, within each of those lots, so that range from one to five and a half acres, as I recall. So you, the development uh, envelope can be built upon, uh, landscaped, etc. The balance of that lot remains in in open space. So that same theory has carried forth into this second phase. These lots are on the on the average larger than uh, they were in the meadows component, which was the first phase. Gentlemen, by the way, you and ladies, you do have a pointer. If you want to uh, access it, we can give you a pointer to point around as you do your presentation today. Okay, well, well, you know, you, you can see where it says San Marcos Foothills Preserve there. That is the end of the existing road and the, the lots. And maybe when you go back to the plans, you'll see how the lots lay out, but there are five lots straight up from that road um, 
I, I don't think you can see my pointer. Um, I'm not sure how to activate it, but there are five um, lots that are pretty much straight up that road. Um, and then there are three lots that will be off to the right above where you see the trail kind of uh, uh, hooking around there. Uh, but but th this gets you the perspective of where it is. When we go back to the plans, you'll see how the lots lay out in this area. Is it all to the left of that band of trees or to the north? Is there any way I can get activated? Yes, with just go to, the, uh, go to the menu and select annotation and select okay. the pointer. Just start clicking around. You'll find it. Okay. Make a mess. Don't hang up, though. <laughs> Where do you mean by go to the menu? Um, hey, so you're in a you're in a pro, you're in a program called uh, uh, Zoom meeting. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then I think at the, at the menu at the top there should be some uh, some sort of uh, let's see. Yeah, menu Steve, up there for you to pull your mouse up to this top. If there's a green bar that says you are viewing um, S bar Vice Chair Josh. Um, and then right next to that is view options. Got it. If you click that drop down menu, there's a there's an annotate button. Go Got ahead it. and click that. Got it. And you'll see you have some is choices there, there. So five lots, or, or, uh, I presume you can see that pencil that I'm waving there. You have to click five on the, little, uh, five lots are in this area, and then three of them are over here, rough, roughly. Yeah. There you go. Okay, good. Okay. There's roughly three over here and five up in this area, okay. roughly. And you'll, you'll see it when we go back to the plans, but that's the general area. This street gets extended upward to serve these five plots. And then there's a, an offshoot, uh, uh, another street that comes over and serves these three lots over here. Lots one, two, three, four, and five are in this area. And then the numbers jump to, uh, what are they? 12, 13, and 14 are over in this area. We aren't proposing any changes to the, the development envelopes or the lot lines. Those are all recorded and, and done. We're just here about architecture within the landscape and development envelopes. I think this is shown on the second page of the presentation. Yeah, yeah. let's go back to this. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Unfortunately, my lines are still there. <laughs> That was pretty close. A little thing called, if you look at that thing, Steve says spotlight, that's, that'll give you this little, uh, little pointer, kind of like, you know, a little laser pointer. That'd be helpful. Yeah, you know what, Josh? Spotlight can only be used by the person who is sharing their screen. Okay, well, I'll try and help Steve with that from time to time. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I, I think we should dive into lot one, which is right here, and, uh, and let Bob Heidi and Aaron Heidi uh, walk us through those. Walk us through lot one. I'd be happy to. Um, I am Bob Heidi. My uh, daughter Aaron Heidi Nelson is here, along with Dan Wavel. Um, we are. Um, I want to thank you from the very onset for your comments and insight um, related to the status of our work to date. There are common characteristics that occur on all of the eight lots that I'm just going to outline in general, so I won't have to come back to it on each occasion. The um, primary objective was to minimize grading, um, orient residences so that they took advantage of the long distance views, separate the houses as much as possible, um, provide access from the primary circulation at a lower elevation wherever possible and try to climb up to the residence. Um, minimize roof spans, provide protected outdoor living spaces, provide optional guest houses and companions um, to address specific lifestyles. 
Um, work within the developable, developable area as defined in the original um, approvals. Um, design uh, the exterior, eleva exterior elevations that borrow from um, characteristics that are found in Santa Barbara. And the very onset with these large sites and knowing that we would um, be siting the houses off the primary road, we wanted to make sure that we met um, fire department standards for access to the dwellings and hose pools. So as we sort of start at lot one, and we go to the next slide. We have one that kind of blows up the site plan here. Yes, can you please put Please advance to the next image, yeah. So this is uh, an enlargement that references the um, LED. Um, this site is actually 27.4 acres. The developable area is 3.62. Um, we've attempted to minimize grading, developed um, a preliminary grading plan. The contours that you're looking here at are really two foot increments, so you can get a sense of how the pad is graded. Um, we're setting this elevation at 570. As you come up from the road, again, the sort of idea of arriving at a lower elevation and then coming up to the dwelling, that turnaround that you see is meeting fire department requirements for turnaround. Um, this is a, a floor plan that is linear as it attempt to put as many rooms facing south towards the towards the long distance views. You can see a reference for potential um, cabanas and guest houses that may or may not be constructed. The garages are de-emphasized by sort of pulling them um, deeper into the rival court and separating them from the point of entry. Uh, we can go to the floor plan next. Next slide, please. Unless there are questions here. Okay. So again, um, reiterating a very linear plan, providing a covered outdoor space in terms of protection. Uh, you enter in the middle of the plan, turn left and right to, uh, from the standpoint of, a, of separating secondary bedrooms from the master suite with living in the middle. Um, this house is well under the area of the approved plan. I think there's a roof plan here that would reference um, oh, a roof that's fragmented, um, broken up into smaller pieces. Do we have a roof plan in here? Yes, please move to the next sheet. So the next sheet will identify how the roof is constructed. So it's, it's broken into a um, Oh, smaller pieces to address a scale. There's covered space that I believe will animate the elevation. Um, at this point, we've done some 3D modeling that will demonstrate how this building form really um, is completed. So let's kind of go to the next one. In terms of materials and colors, I'd say we're very preliminary here. We don't. Um, we know that there's a concern for seeing these homes from a long distance, so we're, the colors that are here have not really been completely vetted on our side. Uh, we, we will, so we, as we turn pages here, you'll see dwellings that are white in color as they're rendered, but I, I know that we will be coming back and trying to develop uh, a color palette that is more consistent with the terrain in the, the, the ground plane. So here, um, this is how you would arrive at this dwelling. You come up to it. Um, there's a covered area that is providing a condition that sort of removes the secondary bedrooms or a transition zone that pushes the secondary bedroom sort of away from the arrival. Deeper into it, there's a potentially a walled court. All of this is preliminary. The landscape architect hasn't really um, participated at this point. So we will obviously be getting input as we go forward. And the garages are pulled back and they're basically, you, as you arrive here, you don't, the, the garages are very de-emphasized. 
So let's click to the next one. Next slide, please. Another view from above, um, bird's eye view that sort of outlines the building form um, and basically supports this concept of breaking the roof into smaller fractured pieces. And the next slide. This is from the back, um, looking at the rear of the dwelling. If you were to go back and look at previous, the previous approvals, there were walkout basements um, demonstrating sort of two-story massing facing south. There is none of that here. Um, all of these dwellings will be located on a single pad and um, the massing we believe is, is far um, uh, less in terms of characteristics to, or in terms of form. You can't see so that, um, that, that in essence, we, we believe we meet the um, previous approvals as it relates to height and we can demonstrate that through the documentation that's been um, sent to you. So and that's, um, that's the first lot, lot one. The remaining two pages reference the pool cabana and the guest house that are um, optional, as Bob mentioned earlier. And um, the floor plans repeat themselves on each lot, depending on which elevation characteristic are pre-plotted. So if you can slip through the remaining two slides, you will see reference to those two um, auxiliary structures. So a single story um, guest house with a bedroom and a living space that, that is plotted on the site to fit within the grade and um, also be detached from the residence to provide privacy or uh, multiple uses for the homeowner. If you can flip to the next slide as well. The pool cabana with a, a restroom, shower, um, small kitchen area, and an open air breezeway with a fireplace for ease of interaction to the pool area or landscape, however the, the site is plotted at the end of the day. And that concludes lot one presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Let's move to questions from the board. Uh, Member Peugeot, questions? Yeah, I, uh, maybe we can do this for, I have a, an overall presentation for all of them so we save some time. But well, I think the overall question is, well, what exactly, I mean, you, you, um, we keep talking about previous presentations. I think I remember some of them. Can we just see it before and after or something like of, of, of the whole overall development in the same, the seven of them. So, you know, we can see how, how the, the project has evolved. I'm not sure if you, we can do that at this point or, or not, because we, we already have seen this, the, the, this, these lots, right? And we can make comments about grading and so forth. So anyway. Yeah, I think they're uh, in the folder. I think there is, a copy of the previous middle, if I'm not mistaken. Could I, could I chime in quickly, Chris? Sure. I, I, I just want to be clear, based on Alex's comments, that what you what you're what we're when you're talking about looking at these lots previously, these these terraces lots and the homes on them were approved back in 2006. And what Chuck was referring to, um, you looked at the Meadows lots um, about 18 months ago, whatever it was, two years ago. Right. So I just want to be very clear that you guys haven't seen these revisions or these lots. These lots haven't been in front of a design review board since 2006 or whenever it was. So I just want to be clear on that. Yeah, yeah I, I was confused with that. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. But the, the file that says Terrace Residence is previously approved, what's inside that file? Those are plans from 2006, maybe 2005, and that, that show the, the, the homes that were approved at that time when the project was approved. Okay. And that file is, is available. Uh, right, but, in the but those, those homes were approved on these same lots or on different lots? 
on these same lots. Okay, okay. Yep. Same development yeah. envelope, same lot. Same lots. everything, but this is a new project, basically. I mean, the... New, new architecture new. and site design. Yeah. As we, as we did with the, with the first phase, <laughs> we, we looked at what was approved in 2006. Uh, the houses were way too big, uh, in our opinion, in square footage. And they reflected, they were Italianate and Mediterranean, various types of Mediterranean architecture, which right. we didn't think was appropriate for the site uh, or uh, for one, and what people are looking for uh, from a consumer perspective too. Today, right. <laughs> so could we take a quick look at that terraces previously approved, terrace residences, just, just to familiarize ourselves with how you've evolved? I mean, I think it's great. I think what you're doing is is very appropriate for the direction. But yeah, I agree. I think Josh, if you can go to that file and open that up and real quick, <clears throat> it's it's in the folder in the main folder at the bottom. At the bottom. If I could share my screen, I could do it pretty quick too. Oh. Well, you may have to. I don't to. want to take over, for, you know, whatever you guys feel comfortable with. Well, it looks like maybe it's. I was just having the same problem. Yeah, I couldn't get mine to open either. So maybe you do need to do that, Steve. Can I give it a shot here? Yeah. Uh, Host is disabled screen sharing. <laughs> Leah, can you hook me up? Uh, <clears throat> Okay, I got. Okay, Steve, go ahead and try that. Okay, let me. Uh... You guys seeing that right there? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that yeah, is. So you can go quickly, but just you know, just like a little refresh. Well, that's spot one. I mean, I, I think what you might be most interested in is that. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking close because I want to make sure it's spot one. Yeah. Okay, I think I've seen enough. <laughs> is there an overall plan? Yeah. yeah. Here's go. the five lots. Here's the three lots I was talking about. Okay. okay. And the lot um, shapes and all are the same. It's just no. It's different. Architecture. Style. No changes to lot lines or development envelopes. Okay. This is lot one. Okay. Okay. Well, while you have this open, you might want to quickly preview the other lots to uh, confirm sort of the quality of how they're graded okay. and how this is so so very different than what was previously approved. I can do that. Well, that that's lot one you're seeing there. Mm -hmm. This will be lot two. Now, I think you're probably most interested in the elevations just to get the general gist yeah. of it. So that's lot two. What I'd like to point out, and, and I think it, it occurs in all of these, is that there, there are two-story elements that occur throughout all of these plans um, that were previously approved. In this proposal, there's very little of that. If any. Mm. Very good. Okay. Lot three. Lot four. Ew. <laughs> what that? Lot five. <clears throat> and then the lot numbers jump. So this is these next three are the ones that are off to the to the east as we're looking at the, the area. Mm. So this is lot 12. And these three lots on the east are, are a little smaller than the other five. Mm -hmm. uh, lot 13. And then we'll come to lot 14. Okay. All right. Excellent. So I'll stop sharing. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Um, so we were in questions, and Alex, uh, we were with you. Is that does that satisfy your? No other questions. Thanks. Okay. Um, member uh, Vertiak, do you have questions? And Josh, go ahead and bring back up your screen. Yeah. 
you know, what what road accesses this development? It's the bridge to nowhere over the 154. Really, it comes off directly <laughs> off San Marcos Pass Road? No. No, no. off of uh, Cathedral Oaks. Uh, Foothill changes to Cathedral Oaks at the 154. So just past, I guess, just to the west of the 154, there's that bridge. And you come up off of Cathedral Oaks. Oh, I see. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Any other questions, John? No. Okay. Um, Member Frosher, questions? Uh, yeah, I think just that I'll be very, it, maybe it's not exactly a question, but that I will be interested to see how your grading is working because the previous approvals did have a lot of two-story stepping implying that there was quite a bit of grade change now you've got basically flat one-story structures so it'll it'll be important for us to understand how you're addressing the amount of topography change to create flat sites right okay very good and uh vice chair bloomer questions I have no questions. Okay. Um, I guess I just have maybe one question at the moment. Um, <clears throat> would these homes be visible from the 154? Uh, I, I think minimally. I think it'll be minimal. Yeah. You can see that the, the 154 is kind of below grade as you yeah. go past the bridge on the shot there. It's on screen. Right. Okay. I think it'll be very minimal from 154. Okay. Which lots would be most viewable? If you were saying from 154, it would be lots. If they were visible, it would be one, two, and three. Yeah. And then there are views from, of course, throughout Santa Barbara. <laughs> um, yeah. But, okay. Well, that's. Mm, let's see, that's uh, I think my only question at the moment. Uh, you said you're still developing roof materials, right? You don't have that quite yet. And you're still developing the landscape plan. All right, so let's move on then. If no, does anyone else have any additional questions? No. Nope, all right. Um, public comment, is there anyone from the public or have we received any letters? I didn't see anything, which is surprising. Have you, I guess another question would be, have you all reached out to, I don't know who the neighbors would be, but <laughs> um, to the communities below or across the bridge or? Not, not personally, no. We have posted the site with the required placards. We've got eight placards up there at the end of the road. Okay. All right, so Leah, we've had no public input. Nope. Okay, well. Then let's bring it back to the board for comments. Um, Member Pujol. Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I um, I looked through the whole set, so maybe the comments I will give is to, is, is to the whole development because they're you know the, the comments are very similar. Uh, the um, I, I agree with the comment by Valerie. The uh, the, the grading is, is is a little bit unknown. If we look at lot one, and if you if you put it on the screen, you can see that the uh, the contours are a little bit forced in, in some locations, in some places, especially to the uh, on, on the left of the drawing on the west side of, of the house. Uh, the, uh, the uh, so the uh, I think the architecture in general is excellent in terms of the execution of of, of, of the style and the choice of materials. There's no 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 beef there. Everything is, is uh, I'm totally uh, supportive of that. And the height and the and so forth. I have basically uh, two, maybe three major comments. One is the, the repetitiveness of, of, of these designs. It is true that you know they're sparse, they are they, you know, pulled away, and they're not you know maybe I don't know how how much a, a normal person would see them. But the fact that they're all basically the same, they have two or three models, and you repeat the same concept over and over. It is really takes away from the quality of, of what they are basically five, six, seven thousand square foot developments. I mean, like uh, 
you know, my street on Chapala, we do have a, a, a repeated pattern that, you know, over the years has, has evolved and is hard to recognize. But these are, you know, 1,200 square foot houses. To repeat the same model in all of these sites, I don't know, it just seems kind of like a, really not appropriate for, 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 for this type of development. So th that's one comment. Ditto with, with the, uh, with the um, roundabout, the, uh, I mean, the, that circle, there are other ways to make the, uh, the turn. You know, that may be a preferred, maybe that, that's good on some places, maybe other places it doesn't work so well. So there are other ways to get your, your fire truck to come and go. The third one also pertains to all of the all of the, all of the sites is, is the formality itself, like uh, the, uh, the things being on axis and square, and, and, and on this lot number one, for instance, the two garages, one one against the other, on, on, on this linearity to to back, it's kind of fights the uh, the rural setting where you you expect things to be a little bit more relaxed and, and skewed and turned and not exactly so uh, orthogonal. So those are the uh, three or four, the, basically the four, the four comments. Uh, question about the grading, the uh, the repetition of of the of, of the uh, of the layouts for for you know, two or three layouts for the whole development, so to speak. The the formality in in, in a rural setting. And uh, well, that's 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 it. But also, would like to also emphasize that the uh, the um, repeat that the architecture is very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, have a, um, I need to go back for a minute with a couple questions for Joe and Leah. How do we group these comments for the overall development versus each lot? Should we put the uh, overall comments in each of the comments for each lot? Yeah, Chris, um, I don't think that these are going to be grouped as a whole next time they're heard. Right. Um, so I want to make sure that if we have one for the overall lot, we should list it for each item um, just so that they follow each item as it's going through the review process. Okay, I agree. Okay. And then um, again, going back, I have two more questions for the applicant. Um, uh, first is the easy one. Um, what happens with the existing trail that's there? You said you're going to extend the road. Are people still, you know, people that want to hike into the foothills, where do they go? Where do they park? Do they walk through this neighborhood to then get to the preserve? Or is there going to be a separate trail? Or how is that? Uh, the the, end, the, end, of the <laughs> end of the park uh, is off to the east, just at the end of, of the road going up before it enters our property. So there is a formal entry there. And then as part of the overall uh, entitlement, there is a trail that uh, you come in the entry and there's a pedestrian access trail that that veers off to the east and goes around in essence the perimeter uh, goes i mean uh, to the west and then moves itself north and, and around the project so there is a trail system that's part of it all that in theory is inside for instance lot one is 27 acres it goes around the edge of that uh, so, th so there is a trail system that connects everything throughout the entire project. Okay, so those are new trails? Th those are, yes. Okay, so Josh, can we go to that overall plan showing all the lots and the entry road and everything? So basically we're pushing the trail over towards the 154. You, right? see, you see where, that, oh. where the, the lighter trail was to, on the, the western yeah. side? Yeah, it it is not that exact alignment, but it's very close to it. Okay, so this doesn't really show the 154. No. Um, okay, so will this be gated? Yes. Okay, so basically this road to nowhere will terminate at a private gate, and then if you want to walk the trail, you then walk towards the west and around you, it. Just you walk to the east uh, to enter into the county park. And you and you walk to the west uh, to go along that tra <coughs> trail. Okay, but the yeah. trails are not shown on this plan currently. Correct. Okay. And Chris, then, yeah. can I can I add to that, please? Sure. Especially if you go back to one of the aerials, when the map was created, that created these lots. There, there, right about where it says San Marcos Foothills Preserve on that photo right there. 
-hmm. well where it was. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's good right there, I guess. People people currently go to the right right there and access those trails off to the right. They, they, they also kind of get you up to the north as well. Uh -huh. The map that created this this area, this development, there there is also a lot that was at least one lot, a couple lots actually, that were dedicated to the county. And the county has a plan for um, a small county park right about maybe a little bit above where it says San Marcos Foothills Preserve there. So the county has a parcel, has a plan with a parking area and connections to these trails that go off to the right as well. So that, so that access will remain to the right for, for, for trails and, and, and you know, right. county public use. Gotcha. I, just, I just wanted to make sure that was out there. That okay. the, and Lori actually worked on that plan for that park. Yeah. Um, as you may remember, and this this originally was I think close to 300 gross gross acres. So the develop when when the entitlements were were given, um, probably about 200 acres was given up as park space. So you see, San Marcos Preserve that that wording and and the ridge on the left, the canyon in the middle is all part of the open space that went to the county. For park system and it also that open space then goes farther east and goes around you can see center san Mar uh, marcus foothills nature preserve it all ties in there so there's a kind of the development component and the balance was all given to the county as as open space okay and then, that, that, was, <clears throat> that was my next question is what is the san marcus foothills preserve <laughs> yeah and then there oh, there, yeah, are, there are trails that connect all that <clears throat> Okay, so so this the property itself is three hundred something acres, and um, you guys own all of that, but you're only allowed to build it in these certain lots. No, no, no. The the, the when the entitlements were issued, the the open space area, the the general about two hundred acres was given to the county uh, as open space. In the part that is private, uh, for instance, lot one is a 27 acre parcel uh, that is private but of that 20 uh, 27 acres only 3.62 acres can be improved right. if you will the rest of it has to remain open space so you've got public open space and then you have private space that has to remain open as well right okay i don't know if you can see my annotation there but th this is all county open space generally my rough drawing but all county open space Okay. All righty. Um, very good. Thank you. So let's move on with comments to um, Member Verdiak. Your turn. Well, I uh, reinforce what uh, Alex said. I like the architecture. I, you know, in our preliminary presentation, uh, it's very encouraging. I think that these circular turnarounds generate a lot of paving. And uh, I mean, I, I think that's unfortunate. And I don't know if that can be restudied, but uh, anyway, that's the comments that I have. That's all. Okay. Um, Member Frosher. Uh, yeah, I, I have similar feelings to what Alex said that I'm, I'm, I very much like the direction architecturally. I have a lot of interest in how the grading is going to work because they look like flat land houses on hillside slopes. So I think we're going to want to see site sections that really inform us how they are nestling into the sloping terrain when they have pretty open footprints, including the ones we haven't looked at yet that have the interior courtyards, and I'm, which pushes the perimeter of the houses out even further. So I, I understand that that's probably a very wise thing to do given the amount of wind that San Marcos Pass gets that you want protected outdoor spaces, but the grading is gonna be an important factor. And likewise, the circular driveways um, that are 
creating a tremendous amount of grading. So we're going to want to see site sections through all of that. And then I too am concerned with the limited uh, design theme, you know, of repeating the same floor plan. I think for the, the scale of this project that more variety would be, would be worthy. But the, you know, the, the general style is, is really good. The, the low slung approach to it is really good. And it, for just a, um, just small little things, I think, like if you look at the floor plan for this first building, the the forms that you have with these gable shapes could be accentuated a little bit more. It just, it kind of shows up in the rendering that maybe there's not quite enough projection of, I think it's one of the bedrooms coming out to the back. This is a small thing to be talking about at this point, but that you could have a little more relief and shadow with your forms where they intersect. And yeah, I'll be real interested to, to hear what you're really proposing for materials, for finished materials. It looks like you're showing a mixture of stone and plaster on this first building. And do you have, do you have any uh, more to say about that right now? Um, I know it's a little bit challenging to see in the shadows, but we are proposing a mixture of stone, some um, brick lintel elements over the stone windows. There is siding that will be introduced at some select locations and stucco as well as wood detailing. Okay. So well, there will be we'll... a, a very diverse range of materials. Sorry. Pardon? The, the range of materials will the range of materials will be. Go ahead. Go ahead, Aaron. Sorry. Uh, the range of materials will be very diverse on, on this elevation that we're speaking about stone, stucco, wood siding, and wood um, detail elements on the, the loggia covered areas and, um, and beams and, and after tails and all of the detailing as we move forward will be enhanced. Okay. And is that Santa Barbara sandstone? For the stone? We've not gotten that far yet. So I think that we still have a fair amount of work to do as it relates to the material selection. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, that's, that's it for me. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, Mr. Bloomer. I don't have anything uh, uh, unique to add to what's already been said, so. Okay, um, so uh, I also, I concur with Alex and <clears throat> his, the concern about, especially the concern about grading. Um, you can see what, uh, what's up right now. And we we run into this all the time with these foothill projects. It's every all the developers want to build single story homes because it's more desirable to sell, but it does not respond well to the topography of the land. And so we are constantly battling this. Um, and and especially with this exhibit that's up right now, you can see how much a more grading are those one foot contours. Two foot contours. Two foot, yeah. So yeah. that hillside, oh, sorry. Yeah, so that hillside behind that garage, and you can see how it's accentuated by the, the big roundabout. Um, so I guess my comment would be to <clears throat> explore the possibility of using hammerheads where possible to reduce grading. And hammerheads don't necessarily have to look like hammerheads, you can incorporate different shapes. Um, it just, to, to help sort of loosen that up. But, but yeah, I mean, that's a very steep hillside behind. Um, 
So yeah, overall grading is a major concern for the board. Um, as our public views, um, I, I mean, on a personal note, this, it's, it's just unfortunate that there are going to be homes here at all. I know this is beyond my purview, but that's such a beautiful open space and it has coming into Santa Barbara and leaving Santa Barbara. It's just that that sense of openness will be somewhat lost a little bit. And I appreciate that, you know, you're condensing things and not going two story. And I like the direction of the architecture as well, but I'd be remiss in my duties as a landscape architect if I didn't voice a concern. I think the general public, you know, may feel the same, but it's, you know, this has already been decided in 2006. So, um, uh, roofing materials will be of concern. We obviously don't want reflectivity and um, happening uh, from views, uh, you know, across throughout the area. Um, encourage the applicant to step the homes down with the grade and the use of hammerheads. And I also want to, from a landscape perspective, um, discourage the use of tree alleys uh, along driveways just because it's so unnatural. So I would guess the comment would be encourage the applicant to uh, the, the landscape uh, architects to, um, you know, propose very naturalized, naturalistic planting uh, schemes throughout. And in, so it's in keeping with the natural surroundings. Um, and uh, I think that's about it for my comments. Um, is there anyone else from the board who has additional comments on this? Just, just to clarify, if it's just a, a personal feeling what is shared by the board, I think the, the formality, the orthogonal design of, of, of the accessory units uh, also contributes to the grading. It has two things. One, it, it, uh, it makes it look less rural. And two, it adds to the, uh, to the, to the grading situation. Like, I, I know that these are options that, that they may or may not happen, but you could show them, you know, like uh, for instance, the, uh, why do they have to line up with the house? Can they just turn around just to mi minimize the footprint or, or be skewed? The, uh, the garage on the north side, that, that really seems to push, the, uh, you know, to create a lot of grading problems. So I want to know if this is in my personal opinion, or this is shared by the board. Uh, I agree, Alex. I think that putting everything on an axis adds to the formality, and this is not a formal site. I agree too, and that if some angles and informality were introduced, it would help the grading and the the view of how the building sits on its site. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah, I would reinforce that. Okay. Um, so a quick question while we're on this. The, the oak tree shown in the main road and the sort of quote unquote median, is that an existing oak that you're preserving? No. no. You just, okay, it's just a little extra feature there. Okay, that's nice. Um, all right, and will there be, I assume there'll be, what about fencing and entry gates? Will each lot have its own entry gate and will the, each lot be fenced? Uh, there, there is a, a uh, as we did in the meadows, there is a, a fencing that's part of the, the uh, plan. We use a split rail, natural uh, wood split rail as a demarcation and know the individual uh, by gating the, the, the main entry, it, it doesn't, doesn't force the individual lots to be gated. So it, it's a lot, a lot more natural in the setting. Okay, so I, um, as a comment, I, I, I think that that's a positive, that um, just having the one entry gate and not individual entry gates is a, a, a good thing. And the, sorry, the split rail fence, would that be all the way around each property or is that more around the development envelope? Um, actually in the, in the meadows, we've did it uh, around both. There is, there is a requirement that the development envelope be uh, demarcated, if you will, from the, from the natural, uh, but we did it around both in the, uh, in the meadows. And is that the proposal here as well? That's what we contemplate. Yeah. We really haven't thought that all the way through. <clears throat> 
Okay, so the comment would be um, show location of proposed fencing right. for each lot and, um, okay. So. <laughs> we can add this comment to, that refers to our previous discussion to, to, for the applicant to, to provide a, 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 a full map of the San Marcos Foothill Preserve and the trailhead and the public access. And so we can really uh, locate everything, you know, just like, a, like a, um, a piece of information that will help, you know, that, that this comment pertains to all of the applications, uh, just to basically to clarify what was said to, at today's meeting. Right, okay. We're glad, we're glad to bring that back up to you. I think that's a good comment also, and also to include uh, any proposed trails um, <clears throat> on the overall plan and each individual plan and you know where those public trails are. And <clears throat> another, I guess not much can be done about it, but the comment, I mean, is we're taking an existing trail that's heavily used and eliminating it and going around this development and we're really pushing people over to the 154 so it'll be pretty noisy there um, but I guess it is what it is it's just a little unfortunate um, so anyway all right any anyone else have any additional comments on preserve number one no I'm just I'm curious how we'll look at all of the different houses and then maybe we can come back and review which comments are global for every lot and which comments are specific to each right. one. It seems so, like we've basically done global comments. <laughs> yeah, do we have any specific comments about this house? Um, the, the circular driveway, the amount of grading, the orientation, of the accessory buildings mm -hmm. and the garages. Right. Uh, so another. I think those comments apply to all of them, I think. I know, that's, <laughs> yeah. is there anything really, because I'm thinking about it from my conceptual checklist as well. I've got a lot of global comments and I may just make one page and that's it for all of them unless we come up with really specific items yeah well hmm. i think we should probably maybe we have one uh, it's tough one comment sheet global and one for each there probably won't be that many comments for each because it's still no there. i don't think there will be yeah hmm. but <clears throat> but well, as even requested and then Leah had said, these are going to come back individually more than likely. Yeah. So I think it's important that we have <clears throat> one for each and maybe uh, on each, we should have a copy of the global ones and say, refer to, you know, con global conceptual, so to speak. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to handwrite my global list you know, 10 times or whatever. Yeah, I think we could make one global sheet and then just make copies of it and attach it to all the individuals. Yeah. Of course, I'd like to add that the, uh, the, the design of the accessory structures is really beautiful too, very well done. So, yeah, I really like those yeah. buildings. They're, for they're, I am for lot number one or for overall. <laughs> I haven't seen the other ones yet, but but I think lot one. So there you go. One. Yeah, they're they're very nice. There's a specific comment for you. Um, I have a question while we're on this page again. So are these lines? Are these all proposed topos, or is that some sort of a? You know, you see these light grayish lines. Can somebody speak to that? The gray lines that are underneath here are existing to uh, You will see that there are many of those gray lines were just um, overlaid a blue or a red line on top of it. The grading here is again very preliminary. Right. We need to do a fair amount of work with the uh, landscape architect to coordinate, collaborate with some of their thinking. Uh, we, in general, what we've done here is we've not uh, proposed any slopes greater than three to one. Everything is less than that. Um, I'd like to know if 
is that something that you would support or is that something that you're, um, what would you like to see here? And some of these sites from uh, top to bottom are at about 6% or most of it is. So it's not really, when you say this is a steep site, it's, it is, it's not as steep as, 6% is not steep in, in my world. No. So there, there's not a lot of terrain meaning going through these through these parcels. Uh, and, and again, we're trying to stay at three uh, three to one is the maximum slope where we're grading. I think it really depends how you execute it and whether you end up with a real engineered looking slope or if you can naturalize it. Right. And in order to create yeah, that big flat pad it requires more creativity in how you naturalize your grading. Yeah, yeah I don't think, I mean, we're not, we're not conditioning that you can't do a single story residence. I think Chris made the point that, you know, the preference here is single story residences and you, you could do a, uh, and by the way, this is Josh speaking, but you, you know, obviously split level houses and such on high, on much steeper slopes are, are a great way to kind of conform to the topography. And you, you're probably right that these, are, these are, these don't merit that kind of approach. However, I think if you look at how much land is being grabbed, you know, the, the other idea of these properties is to give the uh, owner a pretty good pad of land to landscape and enjoy, you know, for swimming pools. And it, they're just, you know, they're state-like, so they need to have that feel. So I think there is some question about whether or not you need to bring the finish floor out to the entire pad. You know, is it is it, can, can there be a, a terracing or kind of a sculpting in the site that kind of get, creates a more natural landform? And I would say too, um, I think it's wise, you know, when we're reviewing these types of projects to anticipate that there's gonna be swimming pools. Um, and it, I think what we've seen in the past, it's been kind of a clever thing to do with um, developments like this is create a suggestion of a location so that you guys as the initial planners of the project who are really thinking about it can kind of see that, you know, it doesn't necessarily condition that the person that owns the property has to put a pool there, but, you know, thinking about where they might do it and then creating space for it so that, you know, you don't over sculpt the project so that that becomes, you know, an expensive endeavor later or a problem for somebody. I think, you know, you could put a place marker in there for things like that and say, this is reserved for that. And, um, and then kind of maybe work a little bit more aggressively and kind to, you know, show us how natural landforms like boulders, oak trees, site sculpting kind of go in there to naturalize the area so that, you know, it doesn't just create this giant pad, uh, a flat area that, you know, uh, right. I think we're more concerned. I think I'm more concerned about that. I can get really, I can get behind a sprawling single story house in this location. Uh, I mean, really sprawling with the, with those kind of site treatments. Um, and, you know, you guys did address the fact that you're, you don't, you didn't agree with the previous approval size of, of square footage. I think you guys are really moving in a good direction with that kind of a comment. And I, I definitely liked your comment about the architectural style, not, not being what, you know, not, or, or I like the one you're going with rather, you know, I think it's, I think you guys are heading in a really good direction with that. By the way, I, I should have said that earlier, but I just wanted to add that. I like, I like the sensitivity of where you're approaching that. But think about the site a little. Yeah, and I think um, speaking to that, as far as the grading goes, I mean, this, what is that, guest house and cabana, those don't have to be at the same elevation as the main house necessarily. It might actually be nice to step this down a little bit so you create an experience in walking to it. It could be a ramp, it could be some steps, but getting this uh, enormous sort of overall flat pad on a hillside, it's not a very steep hillside, no, but I think uh, you get a more, you know, a better feeling site if you bring some of that, um, the topo in a little bit. Like, I think that it's a good comment that Val made about reduce the appearance or perceived appearance of engineered slopes and so naturalize grading as much as possible. Um, and I think that's an overall comment. But I also, uh, real quick, I wanted to go back to 
was answered. I'm not sure what these lines are. Is this from an old plan? All these little. Chris, I was looking at the previously approved plans um, and a couple of other things. I, I think it's just some sort of anom anomaly yeah. um, based data or because it, I don't see it reflected anywhere else. It almost looks like this was a pad for a house for a previous something. So anyway, okay. So but I, I think it extraneous lines then. All right. Yeah. I think I think what you'll see when when more detail comes back is our, our absolute mandate to uh, the civil and to Bob and his team is that we don't have anything that looks like it's engineered. It all naturally fits into the land. And Josh, you're right. The, the, we will plot the pools we will, in the landscape plan uh, and some of these other things for two reasons. One, um, to it. it the, for the ultimate homeowner who wants to build it, it's pre-approved, so they don't have to go back through the process. Two, we position it in a spot that we think fits best in the site, and, and and obviously you will you will 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 as well. Okay, I'll make um, one last comment. I guess that's specific to this lot, but I like this idea of the little median. Um, so you might consider creating sort of a grove in that whole area, maybe adding some more trees, you know, around it, and you'll probably get to this, but it might it just be a nice feeling of driving through a little grove of trees. And now, uh, Josh, could you go back a page or two to the overall? Yeah, there you go. Um, huh, I guess it's not as bad as I thought, but I, I was going to suggest that this not be so straight, this road, if we can, but I guess you already have, that's already, that's already set. That's right. set by the map approval about 15 years ago. Yeah, okay, gotcha. <laughs> All right, scratch that. All right, um, any other comments or clarifications, rebuttals on lot number one? No. Okay, I think that's all set then. That's. I, I have one question up. actually on, on one of the comments. Sorry, too late. Uh, huh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> missed my opportunity. So um, for the, ar the, the comment about architectural style, um, so it, it's well executed, um, but the variation that's being requested, is it a variation in the floor plan or is that a variation in the design? It's both, I think, in okay. the style and the um, exterior style, architectural style, and I don't know, Alex. Maybe you can. Um, uh, I haven't. I haven't uh, seen all all the plans carefully. Uh, I just see right away that they, they they have you know two or three plans and they're repeating them back and forth. And that was the comment about. I, I imagine that they changed the materials in the other ones. I, I would you know I would assume they would do that. So so. Yeah, the comment, uh, uh, So then while we're on this page too, another comment that I wanted to maybe get some input from the board. When, when you have this sort of oh, compound theme, is the perception from distance uh, more architecture? Like for instance, would this guest house be better off connected to the house so that from a distance it doesn't appear as there's so much built there's so many structures or do we like the direction of the separation? I, I like the direction because they, they seem like the accessory structures are smaller and, and tucked away and they get lost in the, uh, in, yeah. the in the Yeah, I like them yeah. detached. Okay, very good. All right, let's move on to preserve lot number two. How about the break? Uh, you know, five minute break. We've been on for two and a half hours. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I meant to actually bring that up at the beginning because lately we've been sort of forcing lunches on ourselves because we didn't expect things to go so long and, ha and needing little breaks because this is exhausting looking at a screen all day. Um, so, so yeah, let's take a little five minute break uh, or maybe seven and reconvene at 1120 and then we can think about whether or not we're going to need a lunch because I have a feeling these may go a little faster. Now that we've got this sort of overall.
Yeah, I'd like to push through after our break, if possible, but. Yeah. Okay, do you want to take a 10 minute break then? Sure. Okay, so we'll reconvene at 1124. All right. Okay, thanks. Uh, we'll reconvene the SBAR meeting of July 10th with item number two, Santa Barbara Preserve Lot 2. Um, this for conceptual review of a 5,437 square foot single family dwelling with guest house and cabana. This is a 15 acre parcel and with the same, uh, actually different address, 1165 Via Gaitero Road. So whenever the applicant is ready to present, we can move forward. It's a uh, file 71 if you wanna open it up. Bob, Aaron, are you uh, back on? Let me grab, sorry. Maybe it's just the electronics of people getting back in it again. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they're trying to they're trying to get it back live. They'll be on in just a second. This I'll, I'll just kind of start a little bit. Again, the direction is a similar. Uh, this is a 15 acre gross uh, uh, parcel, with the developable portion being 3.79 acres. Josh, can we go to the next page? Thank you. Uh, Chuck, while we're waiting, do you, are, is that what these are meant to be? Are sort of potential pool locations, these dotted lines we're seeing here? The dotted rectangle, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And again, when Lori does the uh, the landscape plans, they'll have pools, uh, you know, set set dimensionally in it. But that but that is what that dotted uh, demarcation is. Okay. Thank you. And as you may recall from the from the previous submittal, Stantec is uh, Jeremy Saltz is doing the, the civil. So when we come back, the, the, it'll, you'll we'll clearly be able to show you what's happening here grading wise, so that you know showing that we don't have the effect that that none of us want. So this is, this pad is 26 feet above the other, approximately. Finish, I think it was 570 on the other one, if I recall. Yeah, but remember the real estate, you've got a lot of real estate here. So it, it is 26 feet, but you're, you're farther up the hill. Right. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, Chris? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm curious. The um, are the views to the north or to the south or or ma ma mainly I imagine are the mountains, right? And they, are they directly to the north or how, how does that work? The orientation of this house really looks up the Gaviota coast. So, so you're looking, I think, directly out at Mesa and and UCSB and then up the coast. 
So it's downhill. The views are downhill, not, not necessarily uphill to the mountains, right? Is that right? You're not available now. Please leave your name uh, and after the beep. Um, Alex, you, it's really both, both you do have mountain views um, to the north and you, or the north, what, what's the direction, northeast? Mm -hmm. and you have the, the Gaviota Coast to the southwest. Okay, thank you. Sorry guys, I'm trying to figure out what that is, but I can't tell. For me? I'm trying, maybe that's only on my end. Um, um, yeah, somebody's getting a message. I, okay. think it's John, I think it's John's phone, I believe, right? Yeah. I'm gonna call that number. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it stopped now, but if it happens again, um, I'll try to find who it is and, and mute them. Okay, are, are we ready to present or, or somebody missing here? We're, um, the, the Heidi team is having electronically having trouble oh, getting, getting okay. on the screen. Um, okay. okay, no problem, no rush, no pressure. <laughs> Tell you, you guys, you guys are doing a whale of a job trying to do all this on a on uh, on Zoom. That's not an easy feat week after week. Well, we're pretty awesome, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little tedious. For sure. <clears throat> yeah. The, but and thank you for saying so. Appreciate it. <laughs> we didn't sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, we can, yeah. you, can, you can see how this is the way of the future. I mean, I can see a lot of things moving in this direction. Uh, so we better learn to do this real well. Yeah. <laughs> and Leah, I assume there's no discussion yet about when we might get back in that, that room. Chris, the way things are going, it, it, it may be next year, you know? It's, yeah, I'd say yeah. so. There's no, there's not even any talk about making yeah. arrangements for us to come back. Mm. Well, let me be the first. <laughs> Aaron, I can see now you can change your, your uh, statement. I'm talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure I get to sit at that big tall table away from that little small table at the front. Yeah. You know what? We get a we got a brand new projector in there, um, yeah. and I we ran a blue bean training um, for the stamps for BAR in there, and the plan sets come up really clear on the screen now. So I think that's probably the way we're going to go. Um, yes. when we do come back. That's good. Aaron, we can see you. Okay. Can't hear you. Okay. It, it looks like you're on <clears throat> two lines and one of them's muted. So there's a telephone that might be muted. There is a telephone number you can call with your conference phone if you want to get your yeah. audio going. So you could just use the phone number and dial from your conference phone and you'll get into the meeting that way. Okay, I'll try to unmute you. Or you can text us what your problem is and yeah, text. Yeah, it is. Aaron, are you okay? You're unmuted now. On my thing, it says that they're connecting to audio, yeah. or it's trying to. Right. Well, <laughs> the best thing I should do is probably hang up and, and reacquire the meeting. Sometimes the resources fail. You should probably drop out of the meeting and come back in, and it'll re it'll give you a, a reboot on all the settings. I'll try to call her on her cell and suggest a. Okay, does anyone have any comments on lot number two? <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm ready. To, I mean, I, I don't think we need a lot of a presentation, you know, like, yeah. uh, uh, right? Like, do you guys agree with that? I mean, like, we can see it. I have it, I have it on my screen, <clears throat> on my other screen, you know, um, 
Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, maybe Josh, we can just sort of scroll through these plans while we're waiting a little bit. Yeah, and, and I think it's true that a lot of our comments from the first one can just apply to this too. Yeah, I, uh, okay, more specifically, uh, the, um, yeah, uh, the, uh, so th this style here, I'm, I'm not as uh, taken by the style of the house, by the, by the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the way it's, it's been uh, done as, as much as the previous one. The part that seems a little bit awkward is the entry tower, it just doesn't quite, I mean, it doesn't quite work very well. Uh, from, maybe the roof should be different. I'm not, I'm not sure what it is exactly about the uh, the uh, the little terrace over the um, over the entry. I think it's the roof itself. It seems like a lot of roof for for what it is. Maybe a, a trellis roof, uh, heavy timber or something like that might work better. The um, uh, other than that. Uh, Usually these houses have uh, thick walls, and I, it appears that you you know that you have you're proposing that, um, and uh, not sure what else to see. Yeah, it, um, oh yeah, oh yeah. In uh, looking at the at the site plan, uh, you could see how it would be so easy to to eliminate that uh, roundabout and put a T a T at the end by the. Uh, by the what is it called the the guest house at the end, and that would be your hammerhead and forth <coughs> and and then you, you know, your grace a little bit looser, you know. It, but but I also appreciate what 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 Mr. Land said about uh, the the site being a lot less steep than it looks because this these are big big uh, the scale is very it's large, so the. Uh, the slope is not that steep. So we, I understand that, I get that part. It's just, a, it seems like a lot of paving for, you know. For no, I think a big thing here is that if they could naturalize not only the cut and the fill slopes with these one-story buildings, I think it could be very successful. The unfortunate thing is a straight road. I wish you could do something about that. But if, if they really paid attention to the cut and the fill, you know, I, I think it would be very successful. <clears throat> so John, John, we were we were kind of stuck with the with the road vis-a-vis -vis the 2006 approvals, and that's why you'll see it when when we come back with a landscape plan, the insertion of probably oaks along the way to kind of break that up. Well, it would help, but I'm visualizing it from. The highway and uh, it, I see this straight road going up there, and I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it puts extra burden on creative landscape. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, what, let's just continue with comments, and then when the applicant gets on board, we'll have them present. <laughs> uh, but I really think that we all have a good idea of what we're looking at. So um, I, Alex had some comments. John had comments. Valerie, if you want to take it. Yeah, um, I, I guess I'm Hello? starting to question I think why might be these asking. houses are, are so completely Hello? oriented yeah. only to the south. You can hear us from Heidi? OK. Yes, yes. Yeah, we, can, we can hear you. So um, we, we kind of, I don't know if you could hear us at all, but we started in on comments a little bit for this, but let's bring it back to you and <clears throat> go ahead and give us your presentation for the second lot here. You would hear Bob. Can they bring up the screen? I mean, I can do it here. Maybe Sorry, we, we've, we were listening to you guys off and on, struggling to get unmuted on our end. Um, so we're trying a fourth computer here and we got in. Okay. We can hear you okay. So whenever you're ready. Okay, yeah, just talking. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'd be. I we were we were following and have a pretty clear sense of what's been said so far. Um, if maybe I should ask if there are questions related to this plan. Um, from the standpoint of configuration, it's different. It provides a protected um, interior court. Um, I have the comment earlier that we, we're on a hillside 
and that um, breezes will impact, I'll say, livability as it relates to exterior spaces. So this plan definitely um, attempts to provide a protected space for the user. Um, again, we're breaking the roof, fragmenting the roof into as a lot of small pieces to help the scale. Um, it is a, I'll call it wing-like plan where rooms um, have daylight from alternative sides and we believe it's very appropriate for this setting. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the site plan, Josh. I go back to the site plan. Um, here again, as it relates to grading, this is really, um, it is not in any attempt to be a, uh, a grading plan that um, should be evaluated in detail. It's basically giving us, justifying that we have enough um, area to site the building and we have every intention to develop uh, a grading plan that's more organic and has qualities that would not look so engineered at the end of the day. Um, there was comments earlier with regard to the previous plan being very orthogonal in terms of orientation with, with respect to outbuildings and we can certainly make adjustments here and um, develop uh, a, a plan, uh, a site plan that is more organic and, and does not sort of carry on this uh, orthogonal approach. The, the, there was a question about orientation. This is um, uh, north, you can see the north aerial arrow at the bottom of the sheet and we're pretty much facing southwest. I heard a comment about pool. That dash line, again, is really not, uh, not intended to site the pool. We, we have not really collaborated, again, with the landscape architect, so there will be um, an evolution here of this, of the plan, and even potentially where the building is sited with the landscape architect's input. The building as in the, the, the residence may change, is that what you're saying? I, I'm saying it potentially could change, um, not dramatically, but it might move um, oh, east to west, north to south, okay. 10, 15 feet, depending upon the landscape plan and how that evolves and, and is developed. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else we should know about lot two? In terms of site plan, I don't think so. I think that's, that covers it. All right, very good, thank you. So we were sort of in the middle of questions and I think Valerie had the floor. Or yeah, actually, we're, weren't we at comments or? No? Uh, yeah, but I mean, basically we kind of, I mean, we skipped over questions because we didn't have anyone to answer. Oh. Um, so um, okay. I guess I let's just, um, if anyone has any questions, just you know, shout them out for this lot. Very good. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any comments, Val? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'm feeling concerned about the driveway dominating the entire northern side of the house. And I think it'd be worthwhile to take a look at that along with the comments about the circular drive taking so much space that these sites have beautiful mountain views as well as the ocean views but it really feels as if the north is just taken over by paving so i i think there could be some better solutions to that in looking at how you deal with the hammerhead and how you get more landscaping and foreground and the ability to step outside on the north side and not have it feel like you're just in the driveway. So that's, that's my comment. I, I agree with Alex's thought that the entry tower on this house doesn't feel quite right. 
and that you could look at maybe a different roof solution because that is that's a little balcony right up up in there or is it just a feature can you walk up in there oh yeah it is a terrace right it's, it is a stairs on, on, on the on the there lift. are stairs right. yeah, yeah 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 so yeah some maybe a different kind of roof yeah thank you um uh, mr bloomer comments uh You know, Alex's comments about the architecture, I, I actually like the courtyard concept quite a bit and think it's quite nice. Uh, I, you know, I'm a little numb. I, I don't really have a, just to balance out Alex's comments. Uh, you know, I think this, this style could come along. I, I'm not sure if I am have a problem with the tower. Um, I just think it needs uh it's kind of hard to tell from the elevation. It's small, but I mean, when I look at the elevation, it looks nice. Um, maybe it just needs to be developed a little bit further. But in terms of massing, you know, it's pretty. It's a nice. It's not as sprawling, right? So I, I, I kind of like the the courtyard process or design idea because you know you, they they have this nice feature in the middle that also does a little bit of work to contain it instead of spreading it out. Um, so it creates outdoor space and an interior court, which actually consolidates the program in a smaller footprint potentially than this house would otherwise have. So I think that's a kind of a successful move. Very good. Um, uh, Mr. Verdiak, did we get comments from you? I can't remember. Well, I agree with Josh. I, I think the courtyard is nice and uh, uh, the tower doesn't bother me. And, uh, I think it's a nice scheme. I, I think that we're only on scheme number two, and they've heard this roundabout uh, comment several times already. So I, I hope they take it to heart. And that's all. Okay. So um, if we can go back to the site plan, Josh, please. Um, I, I agree. I think that, you know, uh, for one or two or three of these, I mean, the roundabout might be the more appropriate uh, solution, but it, not for all of them. And I think for this one, as Alex had said, there could be, um, this area could incorporate a hammerhead um, without the need for the roundabout. And then um, also with regards to what Val was saying about this whole area in front of the house, I'm wondering if, it's, if it would be possible to sort of flip this house so that the garage is on this side, um, <clears throat> therefore eliminating the need for so much paving out front. Uh, obviously you'll need some to get to the guest house for the fire department, but it could be a more, a, a less formal sort of driveway or even a different material, even be, but uh, that seems like an opportunity to shorten the driveway uh, and, and reduce the amount of paving in through this area. Um, so, you know, there, obviously this was probably done intentionally. So you didn't see the garage from this, the, the roadway, but that could also be screened with trees so that you didn't see the garage as much. So I think that would be my suggestion would be to consider flipping the house. So that the uh, garage is on the Southeast side instead of the Northwest. Um, beyond that, I think, you know, everyone else covered it. I think I'm on, on board with the other comments, so. Uh, I, I like, I'd like to comment a little bit more. I, I think it was a misunderstood. I like the plan very much. And I was looking at, I blew up the elevations on my screen and I like the brick, I like the details. I mean, don't take me wrong. I, I think it's, this is good. I just think that the, um, the, the, uh, the, I like the brick added on the front. It's just seems like the, um, the entry door uh, does the pilot should have more details uh, maybe like the brick should be on the uh, on the entry tower and so forth and i think a different roof would work uh, as far as flipping the garage chris i'm not sure if, if, if that creates more problems than it solves because you know i think they want the uh, by driving to the to the back it, it forces people into the front door which is kind of nice and i think that's why they put the the, uh, the roundabout there as well 
sometimes what happens is, is you put the, the, the garages in the front and nobody gets to the back. And <laughs> so anyway, it may have some other consequences that, that we're not yeah. looking at. Yeah, just the thought. I mean, so I have a question then too. Is Where is the front door on this plan? Is it here? The tower, or... right? Isn't it through the tower? Yeah. Yeah, where is the tower, I guess? It, it's right in the middle in, in, where, where it seems to be broken, where the square seems to be broken. That's where the tower is, right in the corner. Okay, maybe we can go back to the... Where it says PAD, where it says P-A-D, right, right on that, to the left oh. of that. That, that is correct. Where the arrow is, is where the front door is. Where, where the arrow is. You don't see the arrow. Uh, I, I can show you. <laughs> you don't see my arrow either. <laughs> okay. the, arrow, the arrow is shown inside the courtyard, and that's where you physically enter the house. But <clears throat> the lighter shaded rectangle that is is being identified by Alex, I think, is through. There you go. That's it. Okay, I got you. So that's the front door. So okay. That's the well, tower. That's the tower. The front door. The stairs. The terrace. You know, an important element. <laughs> okay, I guess I retract my statement then about flipping the house, but. Anyway, um, it, I think there is a big problem here that Val pointed out, and that's all this <laughs> right in, <clears throat> in front of the house. Um, so maybe there's some creative solution there. But uh, anyway, um, any other comments from the board? Yeah, Chris, I, I, I think that uh, perhaps we're getting too far ahead of ourselves. I mean, he's showing us, a, you know, a, a very conceptual idea here of what they're going to propose and you know just one elevation that's the idea that they're that they're going to pursue and develop there and uh you know i don't think we should go much beyond that because you know we haven't seen four elevations etc cetera, etc cetera, or the grading or a landscape so i mean this is just a very conceptual Thing and I, and I think I think so are our comments. I mean, it's it's about the, you know, the site how it's placed on the site and the house itself. So yeah, I don't think we're going too far, but I, I take what you're saying. Um, so thank you. Um, any anyone else comments on lot number two? Any uh, rebuttal from the applicant? I think we're pretty all much on the same page. Joe, do you have any? Um, Comment or Val, but comments that need clarification for the for the you know for the notes. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I think I've got the, the comments pretty well. Okay. Val. I no, I think I'm all right. Okay. I did end up doing a separate page just with a few things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to do a separate one for each each lot um, and reference the global comments as well. Yeah. Um, all right then, well, that's lot number two. I think we can move on to lot number three. Maybe even, yeah, accelerate a little bit. This would be 72. 72. Thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> um, whenever the Heidi's are ready. We are ready. Um, this is the high point of the, of the site. We are at uh, Elevation 628. Um, the, um, this is a plan that I believe there are four plans that are um, represented throughout this, uh, this proposal, um, each of which has its own different elevation. I believe this is the same plan again with, uh, that you just previewed with a different architectural expression. So um, we can Again, many of the comments that we've heard earlier, we will um, come back with alternative ways to get the fire truck in and out, and again, loosen up the oh, the proposed grading as demonstrated or as outlined. <clears throat> so let's let's if you could advance the um, unless you have 
well, just advance the slide to the next one, please. You'll see a very similar floor plan represented. Um, however, as we go to the next slide, you'll see a very different architectural idea from the standpoint of massing, uh, roof pitch, um, materials, uh, to basically represent a very different idea as you would arrive at the, um, at the home. Um, so no tower, uh, a very different entry experience, um, roof forms that have different qualities and characteristics and clearly a, a palette of materials that is very different than um, the previous elevation. So let's advance to the next slide, I believe. Um, and that's, that's really it for, the, for what we're doing now. You're just basically seeing massing and seeing a very different idea. So there was a comment earlier on that um, this is what you'll see throughout this entire uh, proposal is that the elevations from one, there may be similar, there are four floor plans that are being represented, but the elevations change dramatically to disguise the fact that um, there's a similar floor plan behind the exterior walls. So go, go forward, please. So the, um, this is the bird's eye view, um, basically defining point of entry that is a, a lot more humble and understated as you come into the dwelling. Um, and then go to the back of the house. Next slide, please. Basically the rear of the house, um, taking on a very different idea in terms of how the roofs are working. Um, the roof is steeper in pitch and takes on a very different expression than the previous elevation. So my sense is that um, if you were to, uh, I just don't think you would really have uh, a sense that these, this is the same floor plan. Right. That, that's, that's basically it. Okay. Very good. So um, comments, or sorry, questions. Um, Vice Chair Bloomer, questions? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, Member Frosher? No. Member Vertiak? Well, <clears throat> would you have occasional parking in the front there? You know, I was complaining about too much parking and now I'm going the other direction. You know, wouldn't there be a place to pull out for uh, guest parking in front? As you saw the 3D model, it really didn't reference the roundabout or any, it's not um, demonstrating really the site conditions that will be represented the next time you see this. Um, so I, I guess we do believe that there will be a need for guest parking on site and we will be showing that um, the next time you preview um, this proposed project. Josh, can you go back to the site plan for this one, please? Yeah, actually, I have a question too. Could you bring in the entrance of the drive further up, closer in line with the, with the house topography so you didn't have such a long driveway? Yes, we could. Okay, uh, Member Pujo, questions? Yeah, I was going to ask the same question. I was wondering if that has anything to do with the guest house uh, location, that they wanted to have some kind of access to that. I was wondering why the access is so far south, you know, same, but yeah. And, and that is the exact reason is to get access to the guest house. The guest house, so maybe the location of the guest house, and I don't know. Uh, it seems a little bit, a little bit uh, awkward. Okay. Uh, I don't have any questions either. So let's go back to... Uh, well, can, I, can I ask one more question? Sure. I'm just curious, you have these um, hose pull numbers. Isn't it typical that the fire department wants 200 feet to the back to pull their hose? Have you... We were using a 150 foot 
maximum length. So when you see these numbers, you're basically, um, we're using 150 foot maximum distance for the hose pool. Now, Chuck has taken these um, conceptual site plans to the fire department and is basically, we're under the impression that they've agreed to what we're presenting here. Um, I think as the, the driveways get refined and alternative solutions um, of surface, we will then go back to the fire department and validate what we're doing and confirm that we're meeting their needs. Okay, thank you. Okay, so comments, um, Mr. Bloomer. Uh, I would say so far this is my favorite um, architectural style. I think it's the right look for kind of regionally and, um, you know, I, I think it's, I think that's, you know, again, the same comment as before about the courtyard kind of, uh, I think, consolidates the footprint nicely. That's pretty much my, my comments there. Um, um, I have a question, actually, before we continue. What are uh, the... Um, plate heights for for this one, for instance, and are they consistent throughout the development? The plate heights vary um, through each floor plan or each elevation um, for a range of reasons to resolve roofs or to create an animated um, uh, expression. Mm -hmm. it, we could go drill into it, but there's many different plate heights that are represented in this uh, in this scheme. Okay. I share that they they will start at nine nine foot plates and then range all the way up to twelve, depending on the area of the house and the resolution of the roof. Yeah. Okay. I was just looking at the overall height being twenty five feet for a single story house, and so I kind of figured they were generous. Um, but uh, anyway, um, back to comments, Member well, Frocker. Actually, I think the twenty five foot is what's approved, but it's only, it's 19 foot nine proposed mean height. So nice. you're, isn't that right? You, you're you actually that a bit correct. below. The, we are below. Yeah. yeah. So my comments would be that, uh, yeah, I really, I like the style of this one very much. And I, you know, I certainly agree that the, the courtyard is a, is an important tool for the lifestyle because San Marcos Pass is notorious for high winds. So this really gives you a protected outdoor space. And then the only other thing would be that you may want to think about more uh, protected, covered, you know, even off the master bedroom or, you know, any kind of covered outdoor spaces have tremendous value there when uh, the sun is beating down, so which it you know it gets a ton of sun. You're oriented southwest, and uh, any kind of outdoor sun protection gives you more lifestyle options. But I I really like this one. I think it's great. Okay, uh, Member Vertiak. Oh, but just sorry, just to harp on my same topic again about too much paving and thinking about the northern access and the landscape integration to have n just not a stream of paving on the north side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. John? Well, I, I concur. I have nothing to add. It's, it's a nice project. I like it. Okay. Uh, Member Pujo? I concur. Nothing to add. Thank you. Okay, Josh, can we go back to the site plan real quick? I just have one comment that, but I concur with the previous comments and I think this is fairly obvious given our earlier conversations, but let me just get my annotation up here. <clears throat> um, I was just looking, I guess the comment would be, if the current driveway configuration remains, try to find a way to, um, make it more curvilinear. Like I'm looking at these 
two straight lines, for instance. And I guess I'd rather see this driveway kind of, you know, curve in more with the topography. So um, what's the comment? Um, <clears throat> um, reduce the rectilinearity of driveway. Um, I think, Chris, the other comment of, of and, yeah. access and, the driveway farther north, there you go. I mean, yeah. that I think is, you know, much better, much obvious. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. And so then I guess um, the comment would be consider moving the driveway access point north. But I also think that for this one and the other one, like this, and kind of like Val pointed out, this straight line right in front of the house doesn't lend itself well to a naturalized site. So I think you're, we've made that kind of clear, but um, so, so really that's about it. All right, any additional comments on lot number three? No. Okay. Um, I, yep. I have a general question for all of these. Maybe we wait until we get through looking at them all, but, but whether we're going to have some story polls on maybe maybe picking and choosing or anyway something to think about because I gotta answer it good, on my good check question. Um, and also actually going back just for a minute, I think but if this driveway entry was further north, the house could maybe move over this way a little bit and then not have such a steep <clears throat> drop off at the far end. So um, anyway. But you know, there's no car access to the guest house that way. Well, the guest house may move. I mean, it could be, end up in a completely different location, maybe back here or just over here a little bit. And I think we'll leave that up to the applicant. But, but, uh, but yeah, you're right. There will need to be access to it. So that's what the applicant is charged with. That's why they make the big bucks. All right. Um, anything else? Lot three. Uh, I mean, the question of, of, of story poles, I think it needs to be answered. We've seen story poles in these locations. I don't think they tell us much because like, <clears throat> if you lower it a foot or two, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, I, I, I remember when we saw a few of these houses in, uh, on, on a six, 10% slope, large houses in, 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 with, in, in so many acres. You know, really, I, I, I don't know what, what the story poles will tell us. Okay. Well, maybe we do story polls on whatever would be the most visible yeah. of all of them. Just one house, just I, I, to I, bring it up to speed with this presentation of project. The, the thing is, is like, well, what exactly, I mean, as you know, this has been a negotiated settlement over 20 years or so. And yeah. And the sizes of the houses and kind of settled and so forth. So, um, what you know, what would you accomplish? You know, maybe lower the house a couple of feet, maybe as, as a great uh, you know achievement. I, I just don't see that as as a uh, you know as something significant uh, as a result. You know, but okay. I leave it up to the rest to, to to vote. It may it may reveal that additional screening is necessary if these appear to be really very predominant like coming up the 154 or driving along a foothill, if we, if these feel like, I mean, they probably won't because it's such a big area, but I, I kind of, I agree with Val that <clears throat> maybe the one isn't too much to ask, but I'd like to also hear from John and Josh. Well, I think oh. that story polls on the most prominent uh, site would be a good idea but uh, not on all of them. Yeah. I think that, uh, I think it's too premature. I think they need to do some more design work. Right. And um, I think once we have good design work completed, um, then we can review what's appropriate for um, these guys in terms of uh, story polling, whether it's, you know, we just get a couple flags out on site to, to, to see, uh, you know, the, the highest elevation from the street or 
yeah, ridge lines or whatever it may be. Um, but a couple of high points, yeah. But rather, you know, I'd, I'd like to see some effort towards how they respond to the comment of site, of site placement and um, landscape and um, grading and sculpting and, and look at some site sections and then, you know, figure out if we have a problem or concern with a particular project and then condition that. I mean, I, I think there's a precedence here that, you know, whenever we have a development in a, <clears throat> a resource area, like along a beach or in a, uh, you know, a natural resource area like this, where we have open space, you know, we've always, we've always con conditioned these things to have a story pulling just to, to treat all applicants kind of similarly and fairly. Um, so I think it'd be a little out of step for us not to story pull the project ultimately just the precedence is to really check our work, but I think it's towards the end of the process to make sure that we've done what we think we need to do together on this. Um, and it seems yeah. like a pretty considerate uh, presentation today. And again, uh, compliments to the team for presenting us really well today. They're very organized and it looks like it's off to a good start. So I think we should be able to do that, kind of minimize. Um, the labor involved so we can move this along. Okay, so um, it sounds like uh, once the applicant feels that they have their final locations and you know site layout completed that the board would request uh, at least one set of story polls um, you know for the most um, whatever and what am i trying to say for the most um <clears throat> yeah most prominent um residents sounds good okay the, uh, if i may the, ask the question regarding story polls um without grading it could uh, is the story poll just to define the ridge because in many cases you will not really be able to see the massing through story polls i'm very familiar with story polls yeah and, i think this would be pre-grading and basically if you're going to be cutting into the slope, all you're, all you're doing is showing ridge lines or say for instance on this one, it might be the four corners at the proposed height or the, the you know, the more predominant ridges. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So some of your story poles might only be, you know, a few feet tall, or <laughs> but so we can view this from a distance. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, Chair, Chair, I have, I have one uh, question on, on this um, topic. So for the story polls, it, uh, for the minutes, I, I was hoping to put whichever, uh, at least identify which uh, structure would be the most prominent so that in that, in the notes for that lot, I could put the yeah. note that the story polls would be required. Right. Yeah, I don't think we're there yet because we haven't seen all of them. So we don't know which one is the most predominant. Um, but I would assume it might even be this one. I don't know. Um, so I think at the end of the meeting, Joe, please remind us of that and we will um, determine which is to be story pulled. Okay, I'll leave, I'll leave a note for that and I'll remind you guys. Okay. And if, yeah, so, okay, good. So that's lot three. Uh, any last minute comments? Nope, moving on. Uh, lot preserve number, preserve lot number four. Um, <clears throat> this is a 5,463 square foot dwelling with guest house and cabana. This is a 2.71 acre parcel. 7.4? 73. Yeah, these are numbered kind of funny. So it's a 12.26 acre parcel. So I'm assuming that the 2.71 is, oh, it's two parcels. So maybe you guys can enlighten me. A 14.97 14 acre parcel with the developable portion or usable portion being 3.89 acres. Okay, so I think we might need to correct that. There you go. Yeah, that, that information is referenced here underneath the, where it says lot four at the bottom of the sheet. Okay, got it. So Joe, I think we might need to correct that um, on the agenda. It may yeah, be that. it may be just the way the assessor has it mapped, and it has two. 
just because it has two parcel numbers doesn't mean there are two legal lots there. Right. Um, it may just be a mapping issue with the assessor. Okay. All right. You know so it, it, yeah, and it shows two uh, two assessors parcels, and so that that's just what they're showing on this on the agenda is that it's parcel zero four zero and zero four nine, and they yeah. they're they're you know they're acred at two point seven one and twelve point two six. So as long as the total is the same, it, it should be fine. Yeah. Okay. And Chris, these haven't been assigned to a planner yet. Um, so when that happens, I can touch base with them and see if they want to adjust the project description or if they're comfortable leaving it as is. Okay, it's not Nicole Liu? You know what, it, originally, um, I think she had done some consulting with them um, in the early stages, but I don't believe that she is actually the assigned planner yet. Okay. All right, so uh, let's move on with presentation whenever you're ready. This is a, a floor plan, a floor plan that you have not seen yet. It, it is also um, designed around a, an interior courtyard. Um, the similar approach to uh, the, the dwelling where you come in low, come up a drive and arrive at the north side of the building and that the garage is pulled back and and in my opinion, discreetly located so that it's not part of a first impression. Um, so the reoccurring, I think, condition that you keep seeing here is a lot of paving. And I, one reason for that is really back to the fire department and both tools to um, service their needs. So at the, um, there may be ways to mitigate that and we will certainly work hard to do that going forward. Um, grading here is, is um, again, very preliminary. It's defining um, a site area that we can use for, to provide um, outdoor living areas and access uh, that will evolve as we take the next step um, into refining all the site plans. So we should go to the next plan that will, uh, the next sheet that will give you a sense of this floor plan and how it's organized. So a, a little different entry experience. Um, you come in through a covered space that is actually large enough to furnish and to frame um, the north side of the dwelling uh, or the north side of the courtyard. You turn right, enter the, enter the home and secondary bedrooms are basically serviced on this side of the plan. Coming through <coughs> um, the that access point paralleling the courtyard, you arrive at a great room. This has a formal dining space off the back side. There is a secondary space that can be used for any number of purposes. I believe we're calling that a media room. Uh, and the master bedroom is completely separated in its own wing on the opposite side of the plan. So um, this plan also gives us many of the characteristics that you've seen before where the roofs are thin for the most part um, and um, do not require large roof spans that allow us to sort of keep the silhouette of the building at a, at a very, uh, I'll say low. You can see where the height limit shows here and we're far below that um, as a means of trying to keep it low and horizontal. Back to plate heights, so our maximum plate height is 12 feet. We place that in primary living areas and then bring the plates down in secondary living, living areas. Um, in essence, there's a, there's a covered area prior to getting to that interior, what I'll call loggia or covered space that is part of the courtyard to um, give us some protection as you enter the, enter the dwelling and um, provide some shadow and shade coming into the house. So, that's the um, elevation. Um, you're seeing a, what I'm gonna call a, a Spanish colonial aesthetic um, that we believe is appropriate for Santa Barbara and seems to do well in terms of providing this very low sort of ranch-like um, elevation. Oh, let's go to the next one. So next slide, please. 
So back to massing, there's a covered area attached to a secondary bedroom is your first impression. Um, and then there's an, that next covered loggia is basically providing you access into the dwelling um, and, and through to the courtyard. Um, garages again at the back of the plan there to allow the fire truck to really get deeper into the site and um, accommodate hose pools. So <clears throat> next slide, please. So bird's eye view, giving you a better sense of the forms, how the roofs are fragmented and um, an, an overall sort of small scale series of gabled ends that give us uh, a very highly articulated roof form and exterior elevation. And the last slide I'll I think give us the rear of the house. So that's, uh, that's the extent of it. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> questions from the board? Um, uh, Member Pujo, questions? Uh, no, no questions, thanks. Okay, uh, Member Vertiak? No, no questions. Member Frosher? I, I wasn't, can we go back to the site plan for a second? There seems to be a, a lot of grade change again that's pushing the driveway entrance down. It's a little hard to tell, but that's just kind of a concern. I, it goes along with sort of the same comments for for all of them in terms of their access and and the pay, amount of paving behind the house. But it seems like there's a there's a lot of contour between that circle in the main road and your entrance to of the driveway. So just that'll be something to look at as it develops. Okay. But um, the, the style is, is very nice. Like it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bloomer. Questions? No. no. Sorry, you said no? No, sir. Okay, I have a question. Um, um, is there a reason that this is pushed so far east on the site? And it looks like it's <clears throat> looks like over here is where it really starts to drop off into the canyon. Is, is there a reason this house couldn't move this way further? Yeah, it, what we attempted to do, and you have to go back to the overall um, plan that shows all lots. That are um, the position of the dwellings to not be in a straight line from the standpoint of uh, allowing for um, views and so that there's there's been an attempt to sort of I'll say stagger the location of the house um, as you climb up the hillside okay Josh can you um Scroll up one sheet, please. So, so you're trying to save these views, maybe from. That's correct. And um, what is the? Oh, let's see here. Okay, maybe we can go back down, Josh. I'm just wondering what the. Oh, so, oh wait, let's see. Okay, so I, I guess the reason I bring that up is I'm a little concerned about views from, I forget the name of the road, but across the canyon looking this way and that this would sit so prominently on this sort of ridge line. And then the question was, this is 602. Do you recall what the uh, elevation is of the, I guess it was lot three? I think it's 628, I believe. Okay, so you're quite a bit, so you're basically looking over this house. Okay, so that's, anyway, that's my question. Um, and that's my only question. So let's move on to comments. Um, uh, Member Pujo. Well, I have the, the same generic com comments we had. The, the, uh, the, uh, the amount of paving, the, it seems like the, the grading is not, uh, you know, could be, be minimized. We talk about the access of the road and so forth. 
same comments. This, uh, I like the cordial. Uh, I like the, the design. It, it's a pretty large house, but um, you know, it, uh, it's fine. The style is, is, is fine. Same comments as before. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Ferdiak. No, I have nothing to add. Okay, Ms. Frasher. I have nothing to add. Same comments as um, all of them. Okay, Mr. Bloomer. I think I'm in the same boat with the rest of them. All right, so I'm going to you get the stinker. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm just going to turn my question into a comment, and I think that this house could move west, and I think you, it wouldn't affect the views from above because you're looking over it. And I'm just concerned about public views from, you know, across, like looking this way, and, and it's sort of sitting out on the the knoll and I guess, or prove me wrong and maybe consider some heavier screening and through here. I don't know, but um, <clears throat> that's pretty much it. I think that's my only comment. My, my, I'd like to um, make a comment related to that. We work in a lot of hillside settings and particularly in, in coastal settings and we are very uh, sensitive to overviews, and the views are really down. They are not out horizontal. Um, so when you, we typically try for a, at least a 30 foot dimension between lots to, to capture views that are basically downhill. So again, we, we are very uh, sensitive to views here, and the further we move that house, to the left on the sheet, but I do believe we will impact a lot of above in terms of its ability to see down towards the ocean. Okay. Um, I guess once we have sort of our sections through here, that'll help us to determine what's really looking, that hillside is looking like as well. So um, it's just a comment from one member. So we can. Uh, this may be a candidate for the story polls because it is kind of pushing over to that canyon side, it looks like, so. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. And I mean, there, you know, it might be, I'm having trouble with the scale, but this dimension here, I mean, that's, get, leaves plenty of room for some screening if it's necessary, but I think you're right, Val, this maybe is a candidate. <clears throat> um, so anyway, with that, sounds like anyone else have any comments on lot four? Oh, I did have one <clears throat> sort of a uh, universal comment. I think we need to see where the development envelopes are on these site plans um, so that we, you know, that may affect also the placement. So in for the next meeting, please uh, incorporate development envelopes on the site. Plan. It, is, it is the shaded area that yeah. has been represented. That is the 3.8 oh, acres. It's all of this. Okay, and this is fifth, so the, the other is way out. Okay, I got you. All right, scratch that, sorry. Does that make sense? Um, so, no more comments, lot four? Anyone? Okay, moving on, lot five. <clears throat> this is also conceptual, 4,490 square foot, single family dwelling with a detached garage and a guest house and a cabana. That'd be 74. Um, yeah. Yes. And I I figured it out. this one also is reading as two parcels. So we maybe we can get clarification on that. Yeah. And that's about it. So whenever you're ready. Okay. So um, if I may, um, this is a new floor plan that you have not uh, previewed yet. Um, it does also um, use a courtyard in a very different way. And you'll see that as we get deeper into the plan. This, 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 the location of this house is cited, um, again, back to the observation that was made earlier to prevent it from impacting the views of, on lot four. Um, so we can advance to the next slide. So again, the idea of coming in low and, and uh, coming up to the dwelling is a, is a common theme that is 
identified throughout this entire land plan. Um, we've heard you guys, and well, it's clear that we will do much more to invest, um, investigate ways to um, make the driveways more uh, organic in terms of the characteristic, um, and we will look for ways to use hammerheads and, on certain lots so that we don't have this repeating sort of uh, roundabout as you access the front of the house of the home. But let's go back or let's go forward to the next uh, next slide. So how this plan is organized um, is it's its point of entry is typically a I think in both elevations is a glass pavilion that links the secondary bedrooms um, to the uh, up to the right and then brings you into the great room. It's a very linear great room that commands uh, dramatic views. In this, in this plan, we place a courtyard that is completely um, protected and sort of a sanctuary, if you will, for the master bedroom. Uh, completely private, um, linked by a glass uh, a solarium that connects you from the main portion of the house back into the master bedroom. Um, so very isolating, very unique experience from the standpoint of the master suite. Um, driveways, or the driveway um, comes across the front. There's a more dimension here from the standpoint of where the driveway is. Which this doesn't represent yet, but in where the garage is placed. So let's go to the next slide. So we, we've developed um, an aesthetic here that is, I, I would say, consistent with um, a ranch like um, expression, predominantly gable roof forms. Uh, there's a, expected to be a walled court that you would arrive in. It comes out forward um, to the face of the garage, provides a protection, giving you um, some comments that came up earlier that the views to the, to the um, north with the mountains are significant. And this, this planet yeah, definitely takes advantage of it. So it's, it's sort of the 3D modeling and give you a better sense of what you're really looking for. Next slide, please. So this, this would be as you're coming, um, the, the right side of this is how you uh, arrive at the house. Um, and coming back forward, the small low um, element that leads the secondary bedroom with the, the glass, in essence, a covered space um, that allows you to come out from that great room in both directions, in essence, um, into a courtyard that the wall at the front and then the views to the back, and then you can see the, the court that's attached to the um, master bedroom up, up in the upper left hand corner. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, we should have shown you this one first. This one somehow got out of sequence, but this is basically what you would see as you arrive at the house. Um, I'm going to say sort of a humble um, elevation, not overly complicated, um, but a lot of emphasis on covered outdoor space. Next slide, please. So this is the back of the house, and here you can clearly see how the courtyard um, is basically defining a very different space related to the master space. That's, I think, the last slide for the last slide. I just want to briefly talk about materiality on this elevation because I know that um, the two dimensional view and really renderings are, are not very uh, clear to depict that. But this will be a, a combination of wood siding, wood elements. There is a metal roof at the entry um, arrival point and stucco as well as. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, Aaron. I, it's, I'm having a little trouble hearing. I think through your microphone, you guys sound a little garbled or something. I don't know what. Okay, um, I got closer. 
That's better. Technical difficulties until the end. Um, <laughs> the combination of materials on this elevation are metal roof, metal um, hardware, wood siding, stucco, and we've tried to um, kind of carry the farmhouse, the modern farmhouse aesthetic to, to this elevation. Okay. Very good. Uh, anything else on lot five? Okay. Um, questions? Um, Member Pujol, questions? Yeah, I have a question about the, the elevation shows some garden walls. Do you mean them? I mean, like you showed them in, in the front elevation. Uh, I'm not sure the purpose may be to protect from this views from the uh, driveway or what, what's 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 with that the wall there and again um this is probably a little early from the standpoint of input from the landscape architect but we believe that this space looking uh, we're developing a space that, that is um facing north that we believe is is a is a place on the site where it's protected from the wind. Um, and there's also views beyond. So it's a, we believe it to be a comfortable space and a, we wanted to make it somewhat private and protected. So will, will the landscape architect agree with that? And we don't know if we move forward. So their purpose is mainly to protect from the wind, right? Is that is that it? Yeah, well, just to provide a protected environment. Uh, okay. there, would, there would be a, a gate here at that at that um, opening, um, just a, a little different entry experience than what you've seen so far. Great, thank you. Okay, um, Member Berdiak, questions? No, I don't have any questions. Okay, Member Frosher? No, I don't have any questions. Member Bloomer? No questions. Okay. Josh, can you go to the site plan? Please. <clears throat> okay. I don't have any questions either. So uh, let's move right into comments, uh, Mr. Peugeot. Yeah, I, I have the same comments as before. I think in this, in this particular one, the uh, the comment about formality is even more so because of the style of the house itself, the uh, with the high 10 and 12 pitch and so. So I, I'm not against it. I'm just saying that um, there is a, a, an a, a inherent conflict between a, uh, a formality which is more is more associated with with uh, urban forms, urban environments, and this you know the, the, and, and this location. And and here in this in this house it looks a, li a little bit more so. That's why I ask about the. Uh, the, the way you use the, the walls. I mean, these are walls that are used, you know, like in, also in a more urban environment. I understand now why you have them, but there, there must be a way to soften this just to blend some more with the, uh, the type of, uh, you know, hillside uh, agricultural kind of uh, setting. Thanks. Actually, I did have a quick question. Um, what is the requirement on these homes for the garages? Is it required to have four or three or? Really, it's really a market-driven um, question, you know, question, and the and the answer is that's what what most people want. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, let's see, uh, Member Verdiak, comments. Yeah, I think it it's a nice looking uh, elevation here, and it's uh, broken down. It almost has kind of a farmhouse village. Uh, or a complex air to it, and uh, it's nice. That's all I have to say. Okay. Member Frosher. Yeah, I, I like the vernacular of it. It it feels like it may feel very long. I don't know what what's the average length of of these houses. This one is one hundred and fifty one feet long. I didn't really look at what the other ones were. Is, is that kind of an average or is this one of the longer floor plans? 
One is 130, one is 124, and, 147. and 147. Okay, so this is the longest one. Yeah, I, I, I think it's all right. It's, it's a nice detailing, and I, I agree with John about the way you've broken up the roof lines. So, yeah, right. thanks. All good, thanks. Um, Member Bloomer? Uh, so my comment is that and this may not be a fair comment, um, but I think further further study, you know, it's, we're only looking at one elevation really here. Um, but my kind of feeling is that especially the element on the right of this elevation feels like a, a an architecture that you would see on a small kind of farmhouse or a four square design or, you know, kind of a downtown uh, bungalow, like in the streets of Santa, you know, like in the more street sections of Santa Barbara. And it, and, and really what we've got here is a nice sprawling estate like home. And I'm just, I'm a little concerned about, um, you know, it, it, it looks like an idea of like taking an old house and doing a, a kind of a fancy addition to it, or like the house has grown from a more modest kind of like ranch or, or kind of farmhouse, which is a, an interesting idea. I just don't, I, I think it adds some, you know, I don't know, I just, the question of validity of that in terms of just what you guys are doing, you know, you're creating custom luxury estates here. Um, and I don't know if this, uh, just a little, I think you're gonna have to kind of go for it here. Like this one's gonna take some effort to make it look right, you know, and, if, if that's a very, I'm probably being overly sophisticated about it. It's probably unnecessary because it's, it's, it's nice. I mean, it's, it's, it's generally nice. It just, that's my only comment is like kind of wondering what, what, what you're doing here. I, I think maybe it's just going to come out in the wash here as you guys get more developed about, it. but I would just, I just wonder, well, it seems like a, seems like an architecture at a small scale trying to get pulled into a bigger scale. And I'm just worried that it's going to look weird, but, Maybe not. It's up to you. I just work on it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's probably, a, it's probably a, a, a snotty comment, really, at the end of the day, I'm being a little bit of an architecture snob here at the moment. So I, I, I generally like it. I actually, I think it's the most interesting. So it probably just is drawing more of my attention to how, how do you actually pull that off? And I could be completely off base because I'm just not seeing enough of it. But I think it's the most, I'll say this, it's the most interesting and looking forward to seeing more, more detail on this one. Okay, did you get that, Joe? <laughs> Way to work yeah. yourself out of that one, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so, Josh. So was there actually a comment uh, that you'd like me to put for that one, or do you, do you just wanna leave that one? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Bloomer's comment, um, maybe, uh, uh, you can put a, a very interesting scheme looking for, you know, you know need, need to see more information on how, it, how it's getting uh, conceived from a detailed standpoint. I, I think the comments generally is just to like try to pull this into a more of an estate architectural detailing, estate type. And it, and it, again, it might already be there. Uh, he dug, I dug the hole, buried it, and then Joe dug it a little deeper. <laughs> I think if you, um, maybe I could try to give you a little different, different take on um, this house. Can you advance the the uh, image to it's this one, I think, and this one probably tells us a lot about what is, we're trying to accomplish here. It, it really is two different structures and linked by a glass pavilion and that really is the intent could that glass pavilion be more dominating um i i believe it could be and maybe we should consider that but this great room with the covered areas left and right are going to be extremely um livable in terms of um how light will sort of filter through these spaces from during the course of the day. There are big glass walls that um, open up that provide access to the rear yard as well as the front. Um, 
my take is it's an extremely um, functional, livable plan where the secondary bedrooms are pulled away and have, um, oh, they're, they're close but yet still separated. I think that um, at the end of the day, people will appreciate this, this building form and uh, the floor plan as it lives. Great, thank you. We have a little bit of a reverb there, so I don't know if um, if if uh, everyone who's listening could mute themselves if you're not talking. That would may help the situation a little bit. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Um, okay, so Josh, would you mind going back to the site plan briefly? Uh, all right. <clears throat> so I think uh, if. If any one that we've seen thus far would be a contender, <coughs> excuse me, for a circular drive, I think this one makes sense. Um, it's kind of, you know, you arrive uh, here and I think this could be a successful approach. Um, the reason I ask about the garages is because, you know, we're adding, well, I, I have a similar concern about this being sort of out on the, the ridge and, and views from this direction. So especially with the guest house really pushed out there. Um, so again, uh, it's a similar concern. And then of course, we're just adding more uh, structure with, with this garage. Um, so if anything, I was just thinking if it was only it needed to be three car garage, it could be sort of attached right there and eliminate the need for this uh, just to cut down on the amount of structure. But I don't know if anyone else has thought on that, but <clears throat> that was pretty much my only comment here. And, and I would sort of reiterate the same, and I think the applicant did, but just getting more uh, naturalistic lines with the driveway and such. So, and I think this may also be a consideration for the story poles uh, due to the fact that it's sort of sitting out on this sort of knoll actually. So, <clears throat> Anyway, um, I think that's all I had for comments there. Anyone else have comments, board members, on lot five? Nope. Okay, I think that's good then. Thank you very much. Let's move on to item number six, which is lot 12. <clears throat> this is a 4,664 square foot a uh, single family dwelling with a detached garage, guest house, and cabana. Um, the property is only 3.14 acres. So these are the three that are um, off to the east. And so the next three will be on smaller lots, <clears throat> mostly about three acres. And uh, take it away when you're ready. Okay. So as you um, arrived at these three lots, they are very, in my opinion, very disconnected um, from the five lots above. There's a fair amount of terrain through here. There's what I'll call a small arroyo that runs up um, adjacent to the road coming up. So you feel there's, a, there's trees in there that will remain that this does not represent. Um, so these lots are very um, separate and, and have Sort of their own quality and own characteristic. Um, lower elevations, what, what's the elevation of lot, um, this lot, Aaron? Lot five. Well, in this lot here, the one we just looked at. Yeah, lot five. And... Okay, so can we go to the next slide, please? So this is uh, the lot that we just previewed above is at 576. This is down at 510. So we've dropped quite a distance um, in grade to get to this first lot. Um, this is a plan that I believe you previewed. This was on the first on lot one. Um, so uh, let's, let's go forward to the next, next slide. So this is a lot, this is a plan you have seen before. It's the only plan that does not have a defined courtyard in some form. It's, it is linear in terms of its characteristic and um, has the same principles in terms of secondary bedrooms on one side, master bedroom on the opposite side with a 
great room in the middle. So let's go to the next, um, next slide. Next slide, please. So we sh what we should be doing is giving you a comparison between the, uh, the, the, the alternate elevation so you get a clear understanding of how different this really is from lot one. Um, and, I, and there was a comment early on that, um, oh, regarding similarities, my sense is there's really no similarity in terms of how this building is elevated in relationship to the other, um, on, to lot one. And we'll, we could scroll back if you're interested or not, um, but I think you'd have to go way back to the beginning of this to compare the two elevations. Um, but we might, we'll, I think when we come back to you with our final proposal, we'll share that with you to give you a comfort level with respect to how they are so different. So let's go to the 3D views, the massing that demonstrates how this plan um, is elevated in 3D. So go forward, please. Yeah, here we go. So this is, uh, this is the arrival. Um, again, very much a Spanish colonial expression, uh, an, an effort to provide covered outdoor space and to provide a fair amount of shadow and animation as you arrive at the front door. Next slide, please. So this, this defines how um, you would never see the building, but just these, these studies are here just to give you a better sense of how the roof works and um, how the scale really is represented. Very preliminary from the standpoint of low walls and what we're representing here. We're trying to um, oh, influence the landscape architect in some way, but we're, we haven't really uh, haven't had that, that opportunity yet to engage with them and invest time to sort out how what this entry sequence could be or should be. So next slide, please. And this, this is the back of the house that shows trellises and covered outdoor spaces that provide protection. And that's, that's it for, for lot 12. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, questions, uh, Mr. Bloomer? Um. I just, you know, it's the same old uh, kind of Santa Barbara stuff here. So, no, I don't have anything. This is okay. <laughs> um, let's see, Mr. Uh, Miss Frosher. No, I don't. I don't have anything to add. All right, um, Member Vertiak, questions? No, I have no questions. Member Pujol? No question, thanks. Okay, Josh, can you go to the site plan one more time? <laughs> All right, thank you. So um, I have no questions either. Comments, Bloomer? Uh, I would say the comments from the first project we looked at today are kind of similar to this one, although um, I would say that the, these are these all are kind of more proximate to one another. So it looks like the building pad areas are um, a little bit tighter and condensed. I think, you know, um, I, I think this was mentioned uh, I'll just reiterate it. These these hammerheads, these big donuts on every project, um, they need to be. They're not necessary. The fire department has. There's way lots of ways to interpret their their regulations. Okay. Is that it? Okie dokie. Um, Member Frosher, comments. Yeah, my feeling is is the same about that, that because these lots are tighter together, 
that the the driveway and the turnaround are are becoming too dominating and repetitive in this cluster of buildings and it seems really important to find some alternate solutions for this and this lot too in particular looks like the grading is more intense to be able to create a flat pad so this may be a candidate to to look at a different approach on stepping the building to some degree or doing doing something to uh, to really affect the approach that this is giving that what this is giving right now is not a good feeling in terms of naturalized grading and i know you want to develop that but this is maybe the worst case okay uh, member verdiak comments well i agree with uh, valerie that uh, the proc they're close together and so the grading becomes uh you know tighter and more difficult you know the these two, you know, one pad is at 512 and this is 510. So they're uh, virtually at the same level and one is <laughs> over the other. And uh, it, it's kind of tricky because of the proximity of the lots. So that's it. Okay. Uh, Member Pujol, comments. I agree with those comments. I, I, that's, here it's simple. This floor plan really doesn't fit this lot very well. Uh, the, uh, the, the thing that creates really unnecessary problems is that the garage, the second garage on the north side, uh, it's just simple. You can move the house. I understand why the house, where it's where it is. Usually long houses are, are minimize the, the grading and, and because, but this is not necessarily uh, parallel to the grades, it kind of goes a little bit of an angle. I understand why it's there. You can see it in the in coordination with the other houses and views and so forth. But this uh, this floor plan doesn't quite work so well. I think the the, the, the main candidate for repairs is, is is to eliminate the second garage and do a larger garage or, or rotate it and put it next to the uh, on the back wall of the bedroom or something else or the, or the master bedroom or something else. It starts looking like a too big of a, of a house for a lot. That's really, um, it's not working as well as the others because of course you have a lot less land to, to play with. So, um, yeah, so this one has, you know, you're gonna have to work a little bit harder on, on this project, on this one. This style is, is, is fine. Okay, yeah, I agree. I think um, <clears throat> if, well actually, quick question. What's the elevation of this house at the bottom? Is that 484? Is that correct? Um, we're checking. Yeah, we're, we're, we're checking. We'll dig, dig for okay. it. I'm not sure. 44, yes. Yeah. So 16, 26 feet. Yeah, so the predominant direction of the topos is kind of this way and the house <clears throat> going this way. And I assume that if this house was not here, you would probably orient uh, this lot 12 more like this way, right? But you are trying to capture views through here. Correct. Um, but it, it creates all sorts of problems. And I think, you know, Alex is right. This garage along with the, the donut here really pushes everything to the south and it does not work very well. I wonder if it would help, well, yeah, I don't know if we could flip this one again and have less driveway behind. Uh, but I, I'll just concur with basically what Alex said is that it's it's not working. This floor plan is not working well on this site, this particular site, due to a multitude of factors. Um, and I think that was that's a um, that's about it for my comments. Uh, anyone, any other board members? Have additional comments? No. On lot 12. Nope. Okay. Um, any, you know, Joe, are you clear on comments for that? Uh, yes, I think I've got the comments on that one. 
Okay, and Val, you're okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, very good, that's it then. Thank you very much. That's item six, lot 12. And now I'll move on to item seven, lot 13. For again, conceptual review, 4,490 square foot dwelling, detached garage and guest house um, on a three acre property at 4250 Via Terrazzo. <clears throat> So um, whenever you're ready. Okay. So again, another floor plan that you've seen uh, before. This is um, oh, a couple of plans ago. Um, I, I, many of your comments I'm sure will resurface here with respect to what's being labeled the donut. And we will do what we, we will make another attempt at, at um, fire department issues uh, the idea of reconfiguring the garage, uh, repositioning it, I think we could potentially do that. Would, it might allow us to oh, gain more rear yard and mitigate all of the land dedicated to the front yard in terms of um, turning movements. So we'll go to the next slide, please, which will be a floor plan that you've seen. Um, and um, we'll then go to the elevation. And this now is uh, a Spanish colonial elevation, uh, different in terms of form and, and very much the same in terms of a roof that is broken into smaller pieces, um, giving us a, an elevation that is small, smaller in scale and not in, in a sincere attempt, attempt not to dominate a big building in, on these on these sites. Uh, so, please advance the, the slide to the three D view. view. Uh, so here we're using trellises and a different technique to um, shade um, outdoor spaces. Next slide, please. And this is the back of the house um, as, it, as it's oriented towards the views, representing the courtyard and the lower uh, right-hand corner that services the master wing. So that's, um, that's it for lot 13. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, questions from the board, uh, Mr. Pugio? Uh, yeah, I have a question. The uh, those garage doors look really tall. They, are they like nine feet high, or, or what's the story with that? The garage doors are they're eight feet. Eight feet. Okay. The length right in the garage is okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Um, member Verdiac, questions? No, no questions. Member Frosher. What's the square footage of this house again, this plan? 4490 plus 579 for the garage and 673 for the guest house. And no, no cabana for this one. I think it was the first one without. Right. Okay, that's, that's it for my question. Okay, Vice Chair Bloomer. Uh, let's see here. I, I don't think I have any new questions to add. Um, okay. Um, can you go to the site plan again? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I also do not have questions. So, uh, comments from Dr. Pujo. Any new comments? Uh, it, it, this one, it seems like um, the size of the house might work better than the one uh, uh, the one uh, north to it. But um, the same problems as before. The same the same comments of the location of the garage, the donut, and so forth. Um, I, I think the um, 
uh, yeah, uh, what happens in these smaller lots, the, this type of houses with other development, which is quite a bit, it starts to push the envelope, and you can see it with the uh, with the grading. But um, I think this one has less problems than the other one, perhaps because of the uh, of where it's located. Okay. Yeah. Um, member, uh, Vertiak. Well, I, I agree with Alex. I, I think that, that it just doesn't fit that well on this smaller lot. Uh, you know, and the donut once again is taking up all this area. Uh, it just would be nice if the house were moved further to the north. Uh, anyway, that would be my, it just seems that we're crowding the site here. Okay, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, member Frosher. Yeah, you know, I'm starting to feel coming back to Alex's original comments when he questioned repeating the floor plans on on such a high-end elegant development and it's starting to feel like these three lots could be a little different and that they're they're all pushing on their space they don't have enough space to be as spread out as they are on the upper lots and that this this might be an opportunity to really do something different and find a way to not have it feel so crowded on these smaller pads. And yeah, this one works a little better than the one up above it, but it still feels, um, you know, driven by fire department and then a big floor plan that's crowded. So. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair Bloomer, comments? Uh, see, um, I, don't, I, don't know, I was thinking about this comment about these being buried. Um, I think uh, I think the variation needs to come from the site treatment, like the landscape architecture and the way the the driveways and the trees and topography that are created for these things probably creates uh, the kind of variety that. Um, I don't know, I, I, you know, we're in kind of a rural setting too, so it also kind of has to kind of tie together as well with the, the rural setting, but um, yeah, I don't know, maybe try doing a contemporary house. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, it does seem like you could have a different mood in these in these three clustered together and make it into an asset rather than you know feeling like they're not as great because they're crowded i, yeah. I, I agree with that and, and i think the, uh, the these two garages of the driveway it's it just uh, it, it's a luxury that uh, doesn't fit on these sides you know in, in 12 and 13, it just um, it eats up the whole lot. Totally unnecessary, really. Yeah, okay, so yeah, I agree, um, especially with Val that <clears throat> repeating these same floor plans, they're long and skinny and the, the sites are not. Um, so we're moving, we're pushing against. And so I think consider maybe, you know, a different approach. Um, but I think these will change a lot with the overall discussion about the roundabouts and, and such too. So you might be able to pull it off, but my gut is that rethinking. And of course, adding a courtyard to a house pushes it outward. Um, so they might not be as appropriate here, given the constraints of the site. Um, another option, of course, Josh, we can go to the next slide is, <clears throat> and I meant to say this for the previous one, but if at some point, you know, if it makes sense to have, let's say this as is, and then break this here and have the angle of the house do something a little different so that it's not so impactful, that may be something to consider as well. But I think 
Val was more accurate with her portrayal of considering a sort of different layout option for at least these two that we've seen um, at this point, so. Yeah, I mean, you might be able to create a real different feeling just by doing what Chris is saying and taking that linear, complete linear run out of it by bending it, shaping it to the contours a little bit differently, but still keeping your forms intact. I don't know. This side seems to be more constrained. It seems to have some kind of an easement, right? It's a drainage easement going to the, uh, to, the to the pond down there. Is that what that is? So it cuts the side in half. It, it kind of, you know, really puts, uh, you know, makes the linearity. Then it doesn't quite work. The, the long house on, on this lot because I just realized that there is really a, a horizontal, uh, you know, the x di direction, the uh, the linearity is. You know, you're fighting the. the the constraints of the lot. Yeah, so I guess that brings up a question for me. Is it allowable to have the guest house on the other side of this easement and, you know, uh, and chain and push the house over, maybe redirect it a little bit? Is that a possibility or do you, what is this easement? Could somebody speak to that? It obviously, it's, it's, a, a, it's a, a drainage easement down to the that drainage basin that's down below. Yeah, so it's a, a pipe that's buried underground, yeah? It should be a pipe that's buried underground. I'm not 100% certain, but I'm fairly certain that's the case, yes. Okay. Yeah, so I think, um, I don't know, I think those are all good comments, and I don't know that we need to... Yeah, basically, the, the linear house is not working on this side. Yeah. And along with the separated garage and the yeah. about it's really pushing things uh, and and really in increasing grading unnecessarily okay um, any other comments from the board on lot 13 I, I had a comment um, and I forgot what it was oh um, I know what it is um, I, I'm kind of curious what the effect on design, I'm just, I've been kind of present to the new California group building, green building code lately with what it's doing to the residential code in terms of, this is a general comment for the whole, Joe, Joe, this is for all projects we're looking at, but there's some stuff coming on like the requirement for solar panels and other requirements that affect design. And, you know, when you guys come back with your next, um, presentation, it's just like a, a small bit of time to show us how um, you're complying with the uh, California Green Building Code and any kind of sustainability, like a, <clears throat> just curious from a design standpoint, how all these lots tie together. Is it a shared resource of photovoltaics and battery systems or is it individual, probably individual, I'm assuming, but um, you guys going to create uh, you know, these photovoltaics on the roofs or are you gonna create little um, solar farms out on the site? Um, you know, uh, we don't really have a purview over where you put those, but it just, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stringent regulation being thrown at residential right now. Um, I just wanna make sure you guys, obviously you guys are gonna include that. I'm very interested in how you're actually applying it to this development because this will probably be the first development of this scale and quality that has to fit into the current upgrades that we've had to put into um, residential that are coming down the pipe. And I, I think there's some stuff in the future that's coming too. So just maybe from your architects, quick summary in the next round about how you guys are complying with this new California green building code and some of the enforcement of it. Okay. We, will, we will do that and we've, we've uh, because there's so much land here we've considered putting them on the ground plane um, but we really have not gotten that deep into it at this point. Okay I, uh, while you were talking about that I'd maybe like to get comments from the board I guess um, overall about the photovoltaics um, roof versus site Personally, I think roof, um, otherwise we're just adding more, uh, you know, structure to the natural environment. But 
Does anyone have any strong thoughts on that? I'd like to hear what the applicant's proposal is first. I don't, I don't really. Yeah, I, I don't think we're prepared to um, make a recommendation today regarding that. We have not really um, invested the time and focused on that yet. We, we have a lot of south facing uh, roofs. Um, they could certainly be placed on the roof. Um, is that an appropriate aesthetic or is that a complementary aesthetic um, to what we're proposing here? Um, you know, that's all, that's, that's a concern. Um, are they more visible on the roof? Yes. Um, well, I, I don't think that we really have taken a position yet to really make a recommendation at this time. Okay. All right, then. Um, all right, any other comments? Lot 13. No. Okay, moving on. Final item, lot 14, number, uh, item number eight, lot 14, exceptional I, review. I have a question. Um, Alex, do you by any chance have a, a checklist page that you could do for this last lot. I've run out. I didn't think that I didn't realize we were going to have all conceptual. So I don't, I don't have any more. I'm sorry. I, I don't, but you can, um, I'll just make it up on the back. That's fine. Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Okay. So, uh, lot 14 conceptual review of a 5,463 square foot single family dwelling guest house and cabana. Uh, 3.35 acre parcel, 4270 via Terrazzo. Josh, uh, lot 14. That'd be 76, yes? 76. 37, thank you. Um, okay, I'll, I was trying to get uh, Aaron to sort of take this one, but she's not willing to do it. So. You're on such a roll. Okay, so let's. Um, oh, many of the same issues I, I have, that have surfaced, we will take to heart, um, address them. This house is, is cited as all of the other seven lots to take advantage of views. Um, it is a plan that you have seen. Um, in this set of documents. Um, it is um, uh, primary idea here is an interior court that allows for protection. Um, I think that we've heard your comments with respect to access and um, circular drives to address fire department needs, we will come back with alternative scenarios and solutions um, that uh, will sort of change the pattern, if you will, as it relates to access points to the to the dwelling or actually fire department issues related to the dwelling. Um, let's go to the next slide, which will represent a floor plan that you have seen before that um, <clears throat> is designed to take advantage uh, or, or to designed to provide a protected outdoor space, um, separating secondary bedrooms from master bedrooms, providing covered outdoor space um, towards the view. Um, next slide, please. Um, we are introducing a farmhouse aesthetic, um, which is predominantly um, designed with gabled roof forms that carry a range of different roof pitches. Um, the um, material range here will be a balance of siding, brick, um, metal roofs, and um, stucco. Um, next slide, please. So this is the beginnings of roof forms uh, that demonstrate how the building is perceived as you approach it from as you come up the drive and, and, and arrive at the front door. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. 
So 3D um, demonstrating the courtyard, the point of entry, um, how the roof is um, um, defined, um, showing where the garages are in terms of being protected and um, beyond the point of entry. Next slide, please. So this is the back of the house, um, oh, framed by two gables um, that uh, provide a small courtyard and a trellis to provide some covered outdoor space. And I think that's that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's go to questions. Um, Member Verdiak. Well, no, I don't have any questions. Okay, Member Pujo. I have a minor question. I think I know the answer. You you place the house more towards the uh, the west end. Um, is that because of to protect the views of, of, of the other lot next to it? The uh, what is it thirteen? Is that it? Is that? Uh, I mean, like you, you didn't um, on purposely you kept the uh, every everything on on the west side of the of the lot. Is is that you know to yeah, go, to the, go to the site plan and um, I think that'll help. So when you, on the west face, um, in every instance, we were attempting to de-emphasize garage doors and put them in a discrete location. If we flip this house, if that's your comment and, and and rotate um, occupied space towards the west facing um, exposure, we will still need a drive to extend um, oh, e east and west to get the fire truck deeper under the site to... Um, no, 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 that was not, that was not the question. No, the question is the, um, on the south, where, what is the south yeah, east? I guess is, is uh, if you move the house towards the northwest uh, corner of the of the lot, right? Uh, is that because you didn't want to um, get into the view shed of of, of, of the, the uh, of, of, of lot thirteen? Is that is, is that why? We're pushing it over as far as practical so that we do provide views from from the lot. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what that's what I was trying to figure out. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, Member Frosher, questions? Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know if somebody already asked this, but could you have the driveway enter closer to the other driveway rather than going all the way down to the bottom and then sweeping it up? Yeah, I mean, maybe not directly across from the neighbor, but yeah, we, somehow, we, somehow not have we could, we could bring the driveway um, up, up slope. Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, uh, Member Bloomer, questions? No questions at this time. Thank you, sir. Um, oh, um, I had a general question. I s assume that <clears throat> Or actually, maybe I shouldn't assume, but are all these driveways, what, what is the material that you're proposing? Does it vary? Is it all the same? Is it asphalt? At this point, we, it is, it's being considered to be asphalt. For all the lots we've seen today. Correct. Okay. Thank you. That's my only question. <coughs> uh, comments, um, Member Verdiak. John, uh, we'll come back to him. Member Pujol, comments? Yeah, um, no question. Uh, same comments as before. I, I like the architectural style, nicely developed. Uh, it seems like in this site as well, uh, the uh, things look kind of tight. And um, the same comments we had before about the, the donut and, and the formality and so forth. Uh, it's the last three sites, obviously, uh, are much more restricted and one starts wondering if the size of these houses is not just not excessive for the uh, 
for, for, and it starts looking more like a, 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 a you know, the suburban Goleta development rather than the more spacious, uh, you know, places that, it, it starts looking different, they're looking more crowded. So uh, anyway, no, I don't have any solutions or any proposals, but the same uh, overall questions we had before, I think all of this, uh, the, uh, the, court, the uh, courtyards are great, but they do inc uh, increase the, uh, the, uh, the area, the visual impact on the, on, on, on these houses. So um, I don't know. I'm not sure what to propose, but they start crowding the, uh, the, the envelope. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Member Frosher comments. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm feeling the same way that maybe these three lots are an opportunity to take a, a different approach and give them their own identity rather than feeling like they're trying to be like the bigger lots, but they're not. And consequently, they it kind of downgrades their ability a bit to, to feel so constrained. So I think mixing them up, whatever you do, whether you put some angles into them to work with these constrained shaped sites or that you do a different approach altogether. Um, and then just a, a general comment on the, the low patio walls, say on the entry side, that I know they're, they're not very developed yet, but it seems like they're, I can understand wanting them for protection from the driveway, but the driveway is maybe too close anyway, but that those, those walls really should be looked at to make them less formal and to maybe working together with landscape, but to, to make them not feel suburban as, as a wall to sort of block things out. Okay. okay. Thank you, Member Bloomer, comments? Well, um, I actually like the architectural style of this and, and at the scale it's at. I think it's, uh, I think there's a little bit of like, uh, there's kind of a, kind of, there's one window there in that central gable on the right hand side. It's pushing a little far up into the, uh, the eave proportionally. So I just, you know, might want to push the plate height of that. I, I don't know what the, the plate height of that, um, gable roof on the right side of that elevation might need to come up a little bit um, or the window needs to come down just a little fussy little thing there but uh, generally like the style of it um, I, I had a question I, I keep coming to the end and looking at these little uh, guest houses and again <laughs> Valor's I'm sure I don't know I can't remember if we covered this but they all seem the same is there a is there a, is there a reason for that, or are we just not focusing on them, or what's going on with those, or maybe they are different? I, I don't know. No, they're all the same. I think there's two versions in terms of their their um, I'll call it style or aesthetic, um, and one is the farmhouse, and it does repeat. Um, in terms of its characteristics. So there's four elevations that are, um, we've been labeling a, a farmhouse um, and these, what you're seeing here in this illustration is the same condition that would occur on all four lots um, should someone choose to build a, uh, a guest house. Um, I guess I have a comment about it. You know, one thing I might consider I, um, is given we're in a rural setting, sometimes it's appropriate to have some of the guest house um, properties like this read as like uh, agricultural accessory structures that have been converted. But one thought might be to um, just create a variant somewhere in the site. You know, it doesn't have to be all of them, but just I'd like you guys to consider maybe not being so literal about these being these little cottages and maybe looking at perhaps having one look like a barn or, or an ag building <clears throat> so that it, it kind of pushes back and reflects the kind of rural ag setting 
reinforces it and creates a little bit of, uh, I don't know, the word that comes to mind is delight in the kind of variation that's out there and, and, and kind of, you know, some of those might actually be like kind of an opportunity for kind of an iconic structure that references the history of the area. You know, it, it, we always seem to have as architects and owners relax, relaxation around what we get to do with a guest house. We don't always have to be so constrained about how we think about them. And they usually end up being amazing. So <laughs> because of that, so I, I, would, I would just focus on those. It may be a, a nice way to create an icon for your uh, marketing you know, to, to create a kind of a structure that looks like it's originally part of the, the land, the, the, uh, the land as it was as a, you know, kind of a, a ranch or some kind of pastoral, you know, agricultural setting. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair that, that goes back to the original comment of, of the uh, repetitive floor plans, in this case, uh, even repetitive elevations on, on, the, on the little, uh, on the accessory buildings. You know, um, these are expensive homes, you know, that the, uh, you, it could invest, you know, uh, it, it wouldn't be uh, too much to ask to, to have some variety on, on, on these buildings as well. Yeah. Yeah, I had the same, the same similar question. I was noticing they were all the same. So I think that's valid. Um, all right. So uh, I don't have any specific comments, any additional comments, but I would carry over the general ones for this lot. But I would like to um, recap our, our sort of overall general comments for the whole development. So does anyone, I don't see John, John kind of disappeared. John, well, are you there? I, I had my mic shut off because the phone rang. Okay. So do you have comments on this lot? No, I, I can't really add much to what has already been said. I, I, you know, the problem seems to be on all three of these lots that uh, a long linear house is not uh, working that well. And, you know, one reason could be of the uh, circular driveway is crowding the site too much. But uh, anyway, that uh, use the old phrase, it needs more study. Okay, very good, thank you. Anyone else have specific comments on lot 14? If not, I think we should maybe come back to Joe and let's um, sort of fine tune our uh, sort of universal comments and wrap this baby up. Okay, uh, sounds good. I have one question um, about one of Josh's comments. Uh, you're talking about setting the plate height of uh, a portion of the structure, and I, I missed that one. Oh, of the guest house? No, he was talking about that on this version where one of the gable ends was being pushed on by the uh, height of the window. Gotcha. So I think it was basically that this window is either too high or the roof line is too low. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so either window is too high or gable is too low. Joe, I would just say it's, it's too specific a comment at this point. We just say study the fenestrations. Yeah. The heights. Yeah. Study the fenestrations. What was the last part of that? And plate heights. And, and plate heights. Got it. Okay. Let's keep it, let's keep it general. Okay. Great. Okay, so. I'm ready to go through the general comments if you guys are. Okay. Yeah. Let me, if, if, um, I don't know if I should add these now or at the end, but I just had a couple of additional comments for the overall. Um, so I'll just say them now and then we can go through everything. So okay. one, of, one of them, Josh, can you uh, scroll up to the first page here, which shows all of the sites? Uh, the comment is just to incorporate the aerial uh, photograph into this or at least somewhere where it shows all the sites so that we can kind of see you know where the uh, where the little valleys are where the 154 is uh, where the existing hiking trails are where the new hiking trails are um, also uh, I would 
suggest that the applicant incorporates topography into the 3D renderings and also include the guest house and cabanas as they're proposed and hopefully some of the landscape elements uh, into your 3D renderings. This, you know, we're reading all of these homes without the benefit of the site. And I think that's an, obviously an important element here. Yeah, and we had asked for site sections, right? Yeah, and site sections, I would say, uh, yeah, both ways, probably. Um, also, we talked about maybe story polling one, and I <clears throat> would argue that maybe we should story poll one from each group. Yes. Uh, uh, for the cluster of three and for the other five. And so just a reminder to everyone, we need to pick which ones we want. So those were my only additions. So okay. let's have- Maybe we wait until their, their next time back once they've worked out some of yeah. the- um, That's a good idea. The donuts and drive driveways. Okay. To choose which one, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. So Joe, do you want to take it from the top and we'll go one by one on these comments and make sure we are all in agreement? Sure, that works for me. Okay, so uh, to begin, I have architectural style is well executed. However, SBAR would like to see greater variation in exterior architectural style and floor plans between lots. I think that that was maybe premature because there are various styles but I do think the floor plan thing is valid, so. Yeah, that there should be a distinction between maybe the upper cluster and the lower cluster and, and between all the accessory buildings not being all the same. But, but I think we could actually change that to say the board appreciates the variation of architectural styles, but would like more information um, or further development. Okay. Okay, just a second. Um, so I'm, I'm just uh, finishing up the comments about, so there, sh there should be a distinction between the upper and lower clusters of lots. Does that comment belong here? Uh, as far as what, architectural style? Yeah. Uh, it's not necessarily the style that's the problem. I think it's the, you it's know, the site layout. Yeah, site layout and the floor plans and the linear and homes. And the planning and doesn't reflect the lot configuration. Yeah, but I, I think that's kind of a separate comment. So maybe we should group these comments. One, let's just start with architectural style. Um, you know, board appreciates the variation of different architectural styles, but would like to see further development. And then maybe we can have a comment about site layouts. Okay, so then the next, um, the next comment I have is grading is unknown and additional information is needed return with site sections that inform how the structures are nestled into the terrain. Structures should be steps down with the terrain. Naturalized grading should be utilized throughout each proposal. Yeah, I would just add where possible to the second comment. So step down with the grade, that's probably not gonna happen, but <laughs> yeah, we would I, encourage I, it. I think it's, okay. you know, it's, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of an unrealistic comment, you know, especially on, on these lots that are overall, they are not that steep, right? The six to 10 percent, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, and I think the, the, the lower three are steeper, steeper it appears. Right? So maybe that's, you know, but we do want to encourage that it's just good design practice. It's not great for sales, but I don't think you'll have any problem selling these things. Right, but, but also the the, uh, the cabanas and, and, and the guest house doesn't have to be at the same level at the right. house, right? I mean, the different buildings, you know. You know. Yeah, I agree. And, and the key is that 
they should figure out how to naturalize the grading. Yeah, I think that's good. Cool. To have yeah. those big flat pads because the houses are so long and are requiring a very substantial flat pad, even in a gentle slope. If it's not done carefully, it, it won't read well. Well, I think we already said, you know, to naturalize the grading. Maybe we should go back to that uh, comment and re and emphasize that uh, the importance of naturalizing the cut and fill grading. Yeah, I think uh, he covered it there at the end. But we did what we didn't cover was that the cabanas and guest houses don't have to be at the, at the same time. elevation. Uh, I think you know uh, the engineered slope. I think that's an important. Um, term to avoid. So if we can incorporate that in there as well, and that would be go well along with the naturalizing okay. grading. Okay, so would you like me to remove the comment about structure should be stepped down with the train where possible? No. Okay. I think just add where possible. Okay, so I added where possible and then I added um, with the naturalized grading um, that naturalized grading should be utilized and appearance of engineered slopes should be avoided. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm ready to go to the next one, um, unless there are more comments on that. Yeah, I think that's, I think that covers it. Oh, did you want me to add a comment about, um, accessory structures do not need to be at the same elevation as the yeah. family dwelling? Yeah. 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 Accessory yeah. structures. Uh, and then, then there were some more generalized comments. Um, consider hammerheads instead of circular discourage alley of trees and have more naturalized plantings. That is down below. Okay. So this is basically our grading comment, right? Correct. Yeah, the grading oh, comment. I see. Yeah. Yes, we're kind of breaking it up. And I think maybe another important, I guess it goes along with the engineered slopes, but trying to avoid just the appearance of cutting a just a flat pad. Um, I guess that goes towards naturalizing. So maybe we could just leave that out. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Okay. So so the next one, uh, next comment I have is more um, formality of design. Um, so I think formality of design fight the rule setting of the area introduction of angles and informality could reduce volumes of grading and improve integration of structures with the existing setting, restudy orientation of accessory buildings and garages. So this kind of ties in with the grading as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, can you read that again? Yeah, sure. Formality of design fights with the rule setting of the area introduction of angles and informality could reduce volumes of grading and improve integration of structures with the existing setting. Restudy orientation of accessory buildings and garages. So, yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of general. <clears throat> yeah, the only confusing part is introduction of angles. Um, but they may want to do that on the lower three, so it's kind of an overall comment. Yeah, I just don't want it to be confused with introduction of angle. I mean, we're talking about the homes themselves, right? Not adding yeah. angles into the, you know, yeah. retaining walls and such. So I guess everybody understands it. Just want to make sure it's clear. I, I think it's the house itself and also the, um, the accessory structures that everything seems to be so orthogonal in, in, in this design. Right. Yeah. And sometimes wings of houses kind of twist, you know, not 45 degrees and, you know, it's just, just to fit the site, you know, like uh, yeah. you see that in rural settings all the time. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's there, Joe. I, um, I think you pretty much covered it. I could, if you want to make it more clear, I could add 
a qualifier for angles, um, you know, introduction of angles and structures and yeah. informality? Would, does it, would that make it better? I, um, it's, it's not really introduction of angles. It's more like um, Al what Alex had said about rotating, you know, wings or certain portions of the structure. Okay, so, so ro rotation <coughs> of wings. Or you could say or... informal planning too, you know. Yeah, I think we're kind of covering it with, like you said, the first thing you said was the formality of the design is contributing to the overall sort yeah. of problem. So I think that's pretty close, yeah. And the applicant is here listening, so they understand as well. Okay. Okay, I just, I, I changed it to rotation of wings or other portions of structures and informal planning could reduce volumes of grading, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, next comment. Circular driveway turnarounds create a lot of paving and should be studied. Explore the option to use hammerheads to reduce grading. Hammerheads or other means to reduce grading. Because, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. I what okay. other means is there? Like, you, either put it, you have to put a hammerhead at the end. <laughs> I don't think there's a choice there. Yeah, you know, you're right. I guess I was. Yeah, okay, fine. I guess I also wanted to make it clear that it doesn't have to look like a hammerhead, that it can be incorporated into other shapes, but the gist is still there. And you're, you're right. It's got to be one or the other. Okay, the uh, so next comment is reflective roofing materials should be avoided. Sorry, what was that? Reflective roofing materials should be avoided. Oh. Yeah, until we get to solar. I know, unless they're solar, I guess. <laughs> unless solar, okay. Which Actually, Alex, there is one more option. And that's a, that's <laughs> Actually, a you guys don't get any say about what they do with the solar. It's, it's out of our purview. They can do whatever they want with it. Right, that's right. Yeah, so it's just, yeah, non-reflective roof material. What's what's the other option, Chris? Turntable. <laughs> <laughs> or a circular, a circular driveway too, but you know. Yeah. yeah. I think the fire department should install backup cameras in their engines. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, next comment. Um, SBAR encourages landscape architects to propose naturalistic planting schemes throughout, so it is in keeping with natural surroundings. And avoid the use of alleys yeah. or other formal uh, planting, you know, designs. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, next comment, um, applicant to return with complete map showing the entire San Marcos preserve, including all of the private lots, public open space lots, and all proposed trails. Okay. Next comment is show how projects comply with California Green Building Code requirements. Okay. And next comment, incorporate aerial photograph onto overall site plan for entire development. I think you could group that with the one, previous one about showing the overall site. I mean, that could just be one plan, really. Mm -hmm. um, so you just want to say maybe uh, applicant to return with complete aerial map showing the entire San Marcos Preserve. Yeah, and trails and- And trails and all, yeah. Proposed developments. Okay. And uh, 154. Okay. Um, all right, uh, you want me to include high and Highway 154?
Okay, so next comment I have, um, there should be a distinction between the upper and lower clusters of lots in terms of site layout. And then I didn't finish that one. Um, well, that's, hmm, that's going back to the style <clears throat> and the yeah. repetitive floor plans. And maybe it's, it should be worded consider. I mean, I think it's up to the applicants to decide how they want to address mm -hmm. the comments of it feeling too constrained in those lower three lots. And maybe it's an opportunity to change style, but, but not, I think they just should consider it. Not, it's not a demand. Yeah, because if they make the other change we're talking about, like rotating wings and that sort of yeah. thing, eliminating the donuts, it might just work. Right. Okay, so I moved this comment up to the first architectural style comment. And I say consider making a distinction between the upper and lower clusters of lots in terms of site layout. Is there any, is, is there any other, besides site layout, are there any other components? I, I would say, I would say that the uh, the, uh, uh, the the floor plan layout proposed do not seem do not seem to fit well uh, in in the lower three lots, something like that. It, it, it's, uh, because that's the problem. It's not that they need to be different. It's just like the the way they're done don't you know don't, don't seem to work. Yeah. Yeah, you know the the linear plan work well with a lot of space around with larger lots and the, it's, it's not conducive to the smaller lots. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I added, I added that comment as well to this, this first. Okay. The first one. And then the last main comment is suggest applicant integrates topography, guest houses, accessory structures, and landscaping into their site renderings. Into 3D renderings or oh. whatever. Yeah. Is that the then, okay, go ahead. There is one, um, I guess the last comment is story, uh, story polls will be required on one representative upper and lower lot upon further con conceptual review. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. So it's one upper and one lower. Yep. Okay. That, so those are all of the uh, overall comments that I had. Okay. Nice, Joe. Um, anyone have anything to add or um, fine tune? Oh, we had one comment about supporting the single entry gate. Yeah. Board appreciates um, that there's only one entry gate. <clears throat> So board appreciates the use of one main entry gate for development rather than individual. Yeah. How about board appreciates the absence of, of, of uh, gates on, on, on each lot? Yeah, individual <laughs> gates. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. There was also a comment about in, um, incorporating the proposed fencing on the layout plans or on the site plans. Right, show split rail fencing layout. Yeah, or any fencing really, yeah. who knows. Show proposed right. fencing on site plans. Okay, got that. Um, all right. We um, need additional photos. We usually do. We didn't really have any photos of the site from, say, 
the bridge to nowhere or any other public streets like across the canyon. Well, and even the individual building sites. Yeah. So I think that would be a, <clears throat> a general comment. Um, return with site photos of each lot area and photos from public views or viewing locations or whatever. IE-154. Yeah, um, Foothill. I don't know if you could see it from Foothill or not, probably not, but. Probably not. Yeah, it's lower but than from, 154. You know, from, from the bridge, what's that street that goes up along that parallels 154 Victoria, before you turn on the bridge? Like, um, yeah, via Chaparral. It should be used across one over the 154 towards this development as well. Okay, I got that. And then maybe. Um, return with more developed material palette. You guys really got your work cut out for you here. <laughs> yeah, but they're planning on doing that anyway. You know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I think we, you, mean to, you mean like uh, with four elevations, right? We're, we'll be coming back with a full, with a full okay. package. That, that's okay. this call was very beneficial to to yeah. things and then we'll be coming back with a full package for you so your landscape architect is already in progress not yet but she will work on on conceptual things for each of these as well again wanted to make sure we got through this first with your comments because the landscape Plans will incorporate a lot of those. Right. Okay. And is there, are there any, <clears throat> will this all be done individually per lot? And then what? You'll also develop a landscape plan for the roadways or how does that work? Uh, definitely be done uh, per lot. Um, so then, I don't know, let, let's chat about it internally and then we'll get back to you. Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering, I guess, what happens? I mean, the, roadway, the roadways for the most part are, you, you know, you're not going to, it's what you said, you're not going to tree line them, you're, you're not going to ornament, ornament them, you want them to stay natural except for a few uh, key spots. So we'll, yeah. we'll, we, that should be easy to show. Yeah, exactly. So you probably, wherever you're grading, you'll probably just rehydro seed adjacent wherever, you're, just to have a road cut through um, and keep it natural. Okay. Right. Mr. Chair, uh, I understand that all the lots are individual, but um, it would be nice to see also the, the landscape together because uh, we really don't want uh, the landscape to be different at every house. I mean, obviously, I'm sure yeah. nobody would want that. We want more of a, 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 a general cohesive uh, plan for the whole area, which yeah. you want as well. So uh, whatever is the easiest way to show that, uh, yeah. you know, then, well, then down to the plant types that are chosen. So I think there could be a comment there though that landscape architect to consider, you know, um, impact of landscape design from afar. Like it should look like it's, so use mostly native plants and, you know, is that on the right track the way you're thinking, Alex? Or? Uh, thinking of the, the uh, I'm, I'm sure the, the landscape architect is going to design all of this together. And then, you know, I mean, the general concept. You're not going to have different styles between one house, I mean, types of, of, of landscape between one and the next. Yeah. So, right. what I'm saying is that whatever is the easiest way for you, for, for the applicant to show at the preliminary stage, later on, this plan can be divided, you know, and, and approved separately. But and it seems to me that it would be easier just to approve the concept at once, you know, like. Anyway, whatever okay. works the best. I see. Yeah, I mean, part of that too is not accentuating the property lines. And so I'm a little worried about the fencing. Um, but we'll see how it comes back. I think, I think with that split rail, clearly if you were going in with white three rail horse fencing, you've got this in your face demarcation with a split rail. 
and especially, especially after a couple of months when it naturalizes, it blends right in with the, yeah. with the grasses and so forth. You don't even see it really. Right. I guess one example of what I'm talking about is if we have a, a lot line that does this or even points that we ask that the, the fencing kind of maybe soften that edge, right? So it doesn't have to stay directly on the property line. I think that helps to give it more of a sort of pastoral feeling. And so if, again, if we have a right angle on a property line, rather than having a fence do that, same thing, it, it looks a lot nicer to just sort of round that off a little bit. Right, and going with the topography a little bit is more as well. Does that? Yeah, I mean, as, as a practical matter, you really you're not really going to see most of this from anywhere. Yeah. Except yeah. From, you know, except maybe from the freeway. So. Right. All right. Well, we'll see again. We'll see what you come back with and make comments then, if necessary. <laughs> um, so, I think Joe, are you all squared away? Yeah, I mean, as long as you guys are, are happy with those comments, that's uh, that's everything I have. Okay, and anyone from the board have anything to add? No. All right, any additional comments from the applicant's team? Well, you're all pretty clear on what we're asking? Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Really appreciate uh, all of your time and effort. Thank you. It's, uh, I think we're... We like what you've shown us so far, and we look forward to the next iteration. And, uh, yeah. you know, nice work. It's a really good direction from what it was already approved as. Yeah. We appreciate the constructive nature of the comments, for sure. OK, great. Um, well, with that, does someone want to, you know, end this for us? You have to make a motion to adjourn, I guess, right? Yeah, and okay, so... I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll, I'll second the motion. All right. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Aye. Thank you for the comments. Thank you. Leah, is there anything that we need to discuss? Uh, no. If, if um, Joe can just stay on the line for a minute, but you guys are free to go. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much. I have a question for you. Yeah, what's up? Um, well, can we boot? Like, I just wanted to talk to you and Chris and um, real quick. We, any, any, since we don't have quorum, I got, we got to boot everybody off. Okay.